Welcome to Trial by Wine. We take a closer look at crimes that highlight how fascinating humans can be. Schmitty, Swanee and Clarkey visit crimes and run them through their jury of three, debating both sides of the case to agree an appropriate, if totally fictitious, sentence. Please be advised, Trial by Wine may include explicit or disturbing content and will include drunken rambling. Listener discretion is advised. All right. Great to see you both again. Hello. Hello, hey, lovely. How are you? That was a little bit over-enthusiastic. <laughs> right, just oh, so nice sorry. to see you. <laughs> oh, well, I'm happy to see you. Yes. Um, I'm especially happy since we, as you say, Carla, have our t- trial by technology. Uh, and I will upfront advise those listeners that when you hear a car go past, that's because I'm sitting in a car doing this recording because there's no internet at Eldon because there's too many people. And that's my dedication. It's uh, 33 degrees and I'm <laughs> roasting in a car. For we wouldn't podcast. be allowed to leave a dog in a car like that, but poor Caroline's <laughs> podcast. Yeah, that's right. Have you got Someone's going to come and report you to yourself. The police will be coming and knocking on the door and checking you're okay. I'm all right. I'm all right. I got my Coke Zero West week. So how are you two? Good? No news from my end. It's just sort of, you know, New Year, time to get sort of start getting on with it, public holidays, yeah. all that kind of jazz, where you don't quite know, kind of know what day it is or what's happening yet. Has it quite hit full swing? swing? Yeah, we're, we're good here. We're, um, we've still got another week of holidays and we've just spent the morning cleaning out cupboards and, you know, getting ourselves prepped for the crazy year ahead, chucking stuff out that had a use-by date of 2016, you know, that, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, it was still good. I don't know what you're doing. What ways? I honestly, anyway. I think some of it would have been still fine, but I, I have a bit of an issue with um, best before dates because you know if you could bring stuff over from the UK on ships in 1788, <laughs> I reckon you could uh, keep things in your pantry for a while as well. Anyway, they're all gone, so we're starting afresh, which is lovely. Okay, cool. So, should we say who we are? I'm Schmidty. I'm Swanee. And I'm Clarkie. And together we are... Trial by by Wine. wine. (laughs) Oh, yeah, best yet. And what are we drinking today? Uh, Well, we are having a little CH Lane limited release French Oak Chardonnay. Um, Mm, This is one that, uh, I don't know if I told you, we... uh, No, I did tell you. We bought some stuff on Grey's Online. So this is one of those... And um, it's not bad. It's, it's not my normal kind of buttery Chardonnay that I like, but uh, it's quite flavoursome. It goes mm-hmm. all right. So, yeah, we're going to polish that off in the next 15 <laughs> minutes probably because it's 34 degrees and it's time. <laughs> How about you? Fair enough. Well, as I said, I'm in the car, so I have to behave myself. So I've got three giant size uh, Coke Zeros. So that's me and Carla. Oh, I'm just on a DC today, darling. Just well, I'm right. backing it up with a after, bunch of DCs, yes, don't worry. After Christmas and year, I'm, I'm about to head off again to Rotto, so I'm just having a, taking a window opportunity to not drink before we start again tomorrow. I don't understand those windows, but fair enough. <laughs> okay. If you were as nasally as me, you would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. It's a small blessing. <laughs> so, Clarky, have you got a story for us today? I do have a story, yes. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting one and I just did a quick read through and there's parts of it that are actually quite graphic. So um, I'm just going to put that out there right now. Uh, graphic in the sense that we explore um, how some people were murdered. Um, so uh, if that's not your cup of tea or if you're not in feeling resilient enough to deal with that right now, maybe... Uh, Switch off and turn on a little bit later when you're feeling like you're ready Considered to hear forward. about that. Forewarned. No worries. Um, I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's pleasing that Carla didn't say, oh, I can't go. I have. I'm, 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 I'm feeling, say that yes. a couple of times. I've been quite robust this weeks. morning. So, today. Yeah, I think so she's I, been um, hung over the last time. She's like, oh, no, absolutely. I just can't do this. Not so I can't do as fragile as I have on other occasions. So, yes, <laughs> I'm considering myself forewarned. Okay. But, um, Me too. Let's see how I go. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. All righty. So I'm going to tell you the story of the Richardson family murders. <sighs> I know, right, just to cheer you all up. Just uh, already, so got, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. I've got two story, uh, two stories, two sources. Uh, one is talkmurder.com and one is crimeslab.com. And I've just done a little bit of cutting and pasting to make up a story that hopefully flows nicely for us. Uh, but really, it's all their words. So the, the gold is hopefully going to come from the carry-on that you two deliver. <laughs> that is a challenge you can choose to accept. Or from the digressions, yes. Yeah. I challenge accepted, don't worry. Absolutely. <laughs> As always. I'm glad, I'm glad. Mark Richardson and his family moved to Medicine Hat, and uh, that's near Calgary. And all of their uh, neighbours consider them quite loving and normal family. Of those neighbours, Phyllis and Vernon describe both Mark and Deborah Richardson as full of life and knew that owning their own home instead of renting was a lifelong dream of the hard-working parents. A former neighbour, Bob Groden, said about the family, they were the family we all wished we had. Deborah was the cement who built a pleasant, happy home and Mark's only plan in life was to do right by his family. Uh, Bob said he lived vicariously through the parents and really admired their devotion to family. Mark had been recently promoted to his uh, electrical engineering job for Encanacor, where he worked with an instrument worked as an instrumentation technician. I'm not really sure what that is, but I assume it means it involves instruments and technology of some kind. Uh, so a new promotion meant more money for him uh, and for the family, which meant they could finally take a well-deserved vacation. So uh, for Mark and Deborah, things hadn't always been going well. Uh, before they met, they were both struggling heavily with hard drugs. However, fortunately, they uh, found each other uh, meeting for the first time in an addiction recovery program, getting married soon after. Uh, Must be love, had... love, love. <laughs> so it's such a nice place uh, to meet. What a romantic story. Yeah. Uh... You know, yeah, I often, when people say, where'd you meet Tony? And I say, well, I was out in the laneway outside of a, you know, bar in Melbourne having a dart, you know, and I thought that was pretty unromantic, uh, but you've just topped it. Thank you. Nice. It does sound like the beginning nice. of a movie though, really, don't you think? <laughs> Two, you know, sort of broken souls, and, but yeah. they just happen to be incredibly good looking, but a little bit, <laughs> bit, a bit rough around the edges, but they're going to get better looking, yeah, as the movie goes on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yes. They'll blossom and become uh, better looking with their love, yeah. So um, before they were murdered, they'd been happily married for 15 years. That's a pretty good stretch. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good so job. they were doing really, really well. Um, yeah. So it was the six-year-old six neighbour boy who first saw the bloody and mutilated oh, bodies God. through the basement window of their Cameron Road home. Oh, Inside awesome. the home were three deceased bodies. That of the father, Mark, his wife, Deborah, and their eight-year-old son, Jacob. Oh. Oh, I just went to ask if they had any kids. Yeah. Right. Oh. So that escalated quite quickly. Apologies for that. <laughs> oh, Jacob. Uh, it's like a scab picket. So the, uh, the police arrived at the scene promptly at 1.34pm. Uh, Neighbours and onlookers had already formed when the detectives kicked down the front door and entered the murder scene. One police officer heard a faint whimpering which turned out to be the family oh, dog lying family next to dog. the dead body of Deborah Richardson. Doesn't that just oh, pull at your heartstrings? It yeah. does. Mm. Although you that say that in a horrible. way that sounds not, you know. Oh, the dog oh, wasn't I was menacing, say, no. Well, no, no, but you, the way you said it was like, doesn't that pull at your heartstrings? Sort of sarcastic. I'm like, what, why did, what happened? Oh, yeah, no, no, I, I didn't mean it like that. I the did dog didn't kill them, did it? Because, it's not a coo Yeah, maybe. no, no. Yes, it's no, not. All right, it's all right. not. No. <laughs> all right, rest all right. assured, rest assured. No, no, my uh, my pull at the heartstrings was very genuine. Okay, cool. Despite, despite the sarcastic tones that you may have heard. <laughs> um, <laughs> so De Deborah's position was unnatural, according to detectives. The police found her body naked from the waist down, her blue nighty hiked mm. up with a clear and visible sign of smeared blood covering her legs. Detective mm. surmised Deborah was murdered first after she surprised the intruder downstairs. The struggle took place according to Deborah's defensive wounds, but ultimately she was overpowered and repeatedly stabbed with a knife. Oh, God. Hmm. Mark was the second to be murdered in the home. So was Mark's she raped arms as well? Were... I would assume no. that she was. But oh. that's weird. Like, yeah, what, no. Is that how she's surprised him by lifting a skirt up? I mean, what? <laughs> 
she's surprising. She'd have like, woo! <laughs> that's another Benny Hill the, moment. I, <laughs> when you said that, I, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, no, don't say that, Carla. It's inappropriate. Let's just see where this goes. And then I was like, you're about to say that she was raped. Right, and then yeah. you didn't. And then I was like, well, why is a skirt up around her? Did she do that herself? <laughs> It is odd. All uh, right. Uh, okay. Maybe the killer just wanted a sneak peek. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. So Mark was the second to be murdered in the home. Uh, Mark's arms were frozen and his fists were clenched tightly in an upward position, which resulted from the body transitioning through rigor mortis. Besides Mark's body was a black-handled knife, which would eventually be determined to be one of the two knives used in the murder of the Richardsons. Also beside his body was the screwdriver which he had grabbed to defend himself against his killer. Both Mark and Deborah had defensive wounds, showing the couple fought back, Mark nearly being victorious. As police began following the bloodstains, they could see that after Mark was murdered, the killer travelled upstairs to the eight-year-old Jacob's room. In, this, this bit gets a little bit uh, traumatic, even for me as I read it, so uh, just oh. uh, brace yourselves. So inside, inside Jacob's room, police found the murdered boy lying on his right side, still in his underwear and with a large knife gash in his throat. There was an extensive amount of blood showing, the boy, showing that the boy bled out quickly. However, police also found his blood-soaked toys on the floor, including his prized possession, a Star Wars lightsaber, which he used to defend himself against his killer. Oh, no. Oh. Ooh. Sorry about that pause. I just had to have a little drink because I have that. That just uh, yeah, that's yeah, awful. Yeah. Yep. So when when detectives first entered the residence, they did not know that there were four family members who lived in the house. The twelve-year-old Jasmine Richardson, also known as JR, was nowhere to be found. Police immediately released her photo to media outlets, thinking that Jasmine was abducted and being held captive by an intruder. Detectives visited Jasmine's school where they opened her locker for any information of her whereabouts. What fell out of her locker was shocking. Oh, Jasmine did it. Jeez. <sighs> Jasmine's drawing showed a 12-panel cartoon strip laying out a murder plot of her entire family, which even included her eight-year-old brother, Jacob. The illustration Jesus. shows two stick figures pouring gasoline into a water sprinkler. The other three figures are unaware that they are about to be lit on fire. And then there's captions that say figures. things like, yeah, yeah. There's mm. things that say things like, um, oh, no, we're covered in gasoline. Ah, I'm being burned alive. Help, my flesh is being burned off. The unimaginable pain, the illustration continues. Clearly, J Jasmine Richardson had been planning to kill her family months before the actual murder took place. Did you say she was 12? Yeah. I did, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, she, oh. yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about Jasmine. Please do. So Jasmine Richardson was never unfairly treated or abused by her parents and was even given opportunities that many children would never get. One friend describes Jasmine saying, JR was an understanding, decent, outgoing, absolutely amazing person, while another friend corroborates those traits. When I met JR in grade six, she was kind and gentle and made an effort to befriend me and made me feel welcome. Jasmine's mother, Deborah, had been practicing Reiki for several years, which could have piqued her daughter's interest in the subject, which led to her embracing Wicca. At 11, Deborah's sweet Is daughter. Is that a bit of a stretch? 100%. Is it a stretch to I go from Reiki to Wicca? I think so, yes. 100%, yes. Are we happy that everyone knows what Wicca is or do you want me to give you a little... I don't know. I was wondering if it sounded like it was a Cert 1 or I don't know where you'd put it on the scale, Wicca. How, uh, yeah. how do you describe it? It's probably a Certificate 3. It's just a different <laughs> theological system. Set of beliefs, yeah. 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 So I'll, I'll give you a description of it to help you to help you work yeah, through it. Yeah, tell us. Yep. So tell us Wicca is a modern earth-centered religion with roots in the ancient practices of our shamanistic ancestors. So it must be set three or at least be somewhere around there, I'm assuming. <laughs> or it's um, an elective. 
Yeah. <laughs> it could be an elective as part of the set three sharp. Oh, I'm major in wicker. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so it's practitioners who call themselves Wiccans honour the life-giving and life-sustaining powers of nature through ritual worship and a commitment to living in balance with the earth. Where did you get that definition from? Google. Where I get everything from. I don't know anything. Wicca is technically classified as one of many pagan religions, though not all Wiccans yeah, would cause... identify as pagans, and plenty who identify as pagans are not Wiccans. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, see, so I would have I would have not have gone the shamanistic bit. I would have gone pagan, pagan. first. But Same yeah, here, okay. But That's I, why I, I asked about the why definition. Why there would be a definition yeah. between the two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, what? Yeah. Okay. So now, so hopefully now we all have a clearer picture of Wiccan. I kind of understand. Do I need to know what the distinction is between paganism and Wiccan? I don't think I understand. And not to be confused with the to. Wicker Man, which Ugh. is, of course... That haunted me from a childhood and I never even but, saw it. I only saw the video cover. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, I think they are pagans on the island who have who build the Wicker Man. What is the Wicker Man? Is that a horror movie or Are something? you kidding me? Yes. You don't know what the Wicker Man is? All right, no, the Wicker Man's every about... Every single about... time we discuss pop culture, <laughs> I fail. <laughs> oh, I can't remember. I think it might be Edward Woodward's in it, maybe. Um, and they did a remake with Nicolas Cage, but basically... It would be uh, better uh, if it, it was Ed Wicker, 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 rather than Edward. <laughs> <laughs> English policeman goes to somewhere, you know, like the Orkneys or some island That's right. in yep. bumfuck nowhere, and um, the people there are a bit weird, and in the end they build this giant Wicker human effigy and they put him in it and they set it on fire and they kill it. Is it a so horror they, movie it was or very, just a... It was from the 80s. I would and I say a that. psychological thriller and then it ends yes. being pretty horrible. But probably more a psychological yeah, right. thriller, yeah. We, okay. we watched it on VHS on our... And we had hired it from Angus and Robertson. Oh, my that God. Was, I didn't even know Angus and Robertson hired things. Anyway, I did not. That was before that. mainstream video. No. Between, before mainstream video shops, my dad used to collect like or get a, a a video, and he'd bring it home as he'd come through the city past Angus Robertson, bring it home, and it used to sit there. You know, it wasn't for me to watch, obviously. And I'd look at the the covers, no, the cover wasn't. art, and I'd turn it over and read the thing. It was terrifying. I think I might have seen the end, or I've seen part of it as an adult, but. It, yeah, it really I think I've only seen child. bits of it. Yeah, yeah same. it scared me then. It was just yeah, because really they, they go around wearing funny pagan masks and stuff. It's yeah. just really menacing. Anyway, yep. not Wicca, not to be confused with the Wicca man. Correct. Yes, correct. Point, Thank you for that Thank you. digression into... Um, sorry, sorry, Clarky. Un, untrue. Hey, you, you no, no, it's, you know it's when good. It, I wanted... I'm sorry, but you know when it comes to the occult, I'm your gal. <laughs> oh, and when it comes to making soap, when it comes to a whole lot of things, you... I'm your stuff. gal. Yes, yes. But I'm very happy with the digression because, uh, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of fiction before we go back to oh, the non-fiction. It's quite heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so anyway, uh, at 11, uh, Deborah's sweet daughter, JR, adopted a unique look and personality, a stark uh, difference to the smiling and happy little girl in the family photos. Now Jasmine was dressing in all black, wearing eyeliner, a dog collar, short skirts, chains, and watching movies such as Edward Scissorhands and Natural Born Killers. And The Wicker Man. Well, it, right. does, it doesn't state that, but I'm very comfortable to put that in the same category as the others. Uh, yeah. And interestingly enough, she did watch Natural Born Killers the night before her mm. parents were killed. Oh, oh. My God. I've never watched that movie, but, you know, I'm aware of it. Yeah. Same. So she, she started hanging out with other men and becoming sexually active. At 12? Well, really at 11. Or 11. Oh, yeah. and we do, and, and we know, okay, we know there was nothing in the family, but was there some other catalyst? Like, was she abused by someone? Do we, like, do we know if there was some she, other she thing? Was that not. She, she was she not. She just no. changed overnight. Did uh -huh. she have... Um, a yep. friend or was someone um, perhaps however, leading the way? There was no catalyst as such. but An influence yeah, perhaps? Yeah, I'll tell you about it, the friend that she met. So bearing in mind oh, she's becoming sexually active now, I think we can see that this is going to go somewhere, that 11-year-old girl. Sandy Swan wants to know who's the bad seed, who's the bad element, who's leading this? 
Well, yes. Uh, yes. We, we can get, no, I'll, I'll hold that off uh, and let you decide. Oh, okay. But Because um, okay. we're going to have a serious conversation about some of the things that happen through this because it's messed up. Okay. So Mark and Deborah started enforcing tougher restrictions on JR, such as no internet, no phone, and no hanging out with friends. Slowly, the thought developed in the 12-year-old's mind that she needed freedom away from her parents. And the only way to get that freedom was to kill her entire family. I'm not, I'm not coming at that. Some people just run away or some people seek a, yeah, they, what they, do they call it when you divorce your parents? Uh, something separate. An annulment? No, there's a term for oh, it. Oh, what is that called? Drew Barrymore did it. Um, mm, uh, Drew Barrymoreism? Yeah, yeah, a Drew Barrymoreism. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there are ways outside of murder. Just saying. Yes, that's, yes, yeah, so I'm not coming at the, um, she decided the only way to get that for her entire family, I feel like. She could have given it a little bit more thought in a less angry manner and found mm. another way. Mm. Anyway, so on August 27th, uh, 2005, so while she was still 11, uh, she joined mindviz.com. Don't know what that is, but <laughs> bear, bear, bear with me. Uh, and also created an account on MySpace, which no longer exists, as we all know. <laughs> Following that, she joined vampirefreaks.com. Oh. Now that sounds oh, that, like you shouldn't oh, be. Oh, that website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds like you shouldn't be under eighteen to uh, join that. So I don't think they had a very good process in place to check the ages of their members. Uh, and her name there was uh, X Killer Kitty X. So just really Killer Kitty with an X on either side. She also joined Zorpia.com under the name of Runaway Devil. Uh, I feel like mm -hmm. if she had have been a runaway devil, she could have run away without murdering her family and that would have been fine mm. but anyway. Mm. So the alias of runaway devil would ultimately stick to her main identity thanks to the media's coverage of the murders. Mm. So on, on her profile, she described herself as bisexual, Wiccan, nocturnal, awkward, a deep thinker, and insane and a psycho and, killer yeah well she got that right i don't i don't mind um you know a bit of cooking and like if i get you know some garlic and some chili and some ginger and put a bit of lemongrass in it and you know all that sort of stuff and put in a bit of broth and mix it up i know it's going to be amazing i feel like if i get bisexual wiccan nocturnal awkward a deep thinker insane mix all of that up together it's not going to be nice is it I wouldn't taste that soup. Mm. Yeah. It's a lot for anyway. an 11 year old. It is, isn't it? It's an it? awful yeah. lot I kind for of think if I would look at I think, oh, love, oh, love, I think you've just tried a little bit too hard there. I don't think you're all of those. I think you've gone, oh, what will be really cool and sexy and a bit scary? I feel like she's just, I'm, you know, I would, yeah. I would have underestimated her at that point and gone, oh, darling, I think you'd have just tried a little bit too hard. She proves me wrong, obviously. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I would have said that the one that stood out there was awkward because, yeah, I'm sure you're, you know, being 11, 12, you're going to be awkward. All the yeah. others, but no. Uh, so Jasmine's hobbies were listed as dark poetry, criminal psychology, blood, kinky shit, and human anatomy. Kinky shit. And you said kinky dark sh poetry, but, it, but at first I thought you said duck poetry, and I thought that is very niche. Just poetry oh, about ducks. Yes, yes, yes. I wonder if there even are whack, many poets. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> yes. Oh, I can't even. Whoa. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Why did the, why then... did the duck cross the road? Quack. <laughs> duck, duck. Poetry. Oh, I feel like you've gone to some <laughs> slam poetry thing recently <laughs> with that quack at the end. Sorry. <laughs> I do enjoy watching that because I always think, oh, far out. Where do those kids get that sass from? You know, <laughs> sass. Oh, so I always think uh. there's too much talk of vaginas. But anyway, sorry, Paul. Again, I'm interested as whether or not they were tick boxes or she came up with them herself. Well, they, we don't know that. But, you know, it sounds like they were boxes. It was like, what, what are you I into? And she went, tick boxes. <laughs> I reckon they were. If you think of a website like that, I don't reckon she just came up with them herself. She's like, oh, 
Choose the categories. categories. Just categories, yeah. categories of interest. Oh, kinky shit. I love that. Don't yeah, really and you can only choose five or six. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. okay. it escalates quite that quickly. Makes more Dark sense. poetry, yeah. criminal psychology, blood, kinky shit, and human anatomy. Like those last few. Nothing's good's going to come from that dark poetry. I can kind of go, yeah, righto. Oh, I disagree. I think the last couple in isolation. All she could be a surgeon. She could be a yeah, doctor. Yeah. So blood and human anatomy. I mean, I, I my, my niece who's a doctor to me. I think she would might be interested in those things. You know, maybe she should be a hematologist oh. or something. We just, I just think when we put them together, we have an issue. <laughs> Even criminal psychology. She could have. She could have wanted to be a coroner. Absolutely. Or a scientist. Correct. But yes, the, we shouldn't underestimate. Kinky her. shit yes. throws it. But you've seen NCIS where the girl dresses as a goth and she's a forensic pathologist. Oh yes, yes. yes. Yeah, it's not that odd. Yeah, no, no. But it's the kinky shit that gets me, and it takes me back to the bloke who. Um, was shagging the dead bodies in the mall. Ugh. Ugh. And that's why I kind of go, you know, yeah. if you get that criminal psychology, blood, kinky shit and human anatomy, I just feel like... It's you, a bad combo. Mix them together. It's and, it's ugh. it's a sliding scale, though. I mean, some people might think sucking somebody's toe is kinky shit. Do you know what I mean? Who are we to say that... True. We don't... We don't everybody's kinky shit is something different. So, again, we could have I'm, looked at this gonna... as an 11-year-old and thought, oh, how... Oh, it's a bit lame, really. She, again, she's proven us wrong. I'm going to go with sucking someone's toe is kinky. Yeah, but if you, whatever you do, as long as you're doing it in a safe and consensual fashion, it's fine. Yeah. But killing your parents and yeah. your brother is not fine. Yeah, I wouldn't have made Step the leap at this far. point. It's not no. kinky shit. I would not no, have made the leap. That's not kinky point. shit. No, no. no. Would not have you made can, the You can suck their point. toes, but you cannot murder them. Mm. Correct. It would be kinky and weird and unpleasant if you did suck their toes. I was thinking of Fergie and that Texan, but anyway, I can't remember much more than that. Uh, Oh, yes, God. that's exactly where I went with it. <laughs> Naomi Campbell sucked Madonna's toe or the other way around in that sex book. Oh. Do you remember that stupid book? I remember the book, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. erotica. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. And um, there's a picture of a toe being sucked and it's, the toe either belongs, I think the toe belonged to Naomi Campbell. Anyway, I digress. If you've got me thinking about toe <laughs> sucking. <laughs> Sorry. And dark poetry. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> dark poetry. <laughs> so um, it was on social media where Jasmine would eventually form a connection to a 23-year-old high school dropout named Jeremy Allen Steinke. Stinky. See, I knew you would go there. That's why I had to pause. Uh, <laughs> that was actually uh, his nickname at the school, and we'll come to that soon. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> Jeremy was also All goth the money and referred to yet himself again. as... <laughs> yep, absolutely. You are all over this shit. <laughs> so Jeremy was also goth and referred to himself as Soul Eater. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Jeremy, come and meet my parents. Now, look, I'm, not... I'm partial to a bit of soul. It's a nice fish. If you prepare it properly, it's perfectly fine. That was a very hey, English well, joke. Sorry, Dover, Paul. Dover soul is beautiful, isn't it's it? It's delicious, how, yes, yes. How's it, yeah, how's like how's it spelled? Butter? S-O-L-E. S-O-L-E. How's it spelled? Yeah, no, we're going with S-O-U-L. Oh, oh, sorry. My mistake. Right, right, right. Oh. Sorry. Is and that you, what you I... can't even make that nice with a bit of garlic and butter. I'm going to embarrass myself here slightly because I, well, perhaps I will, perhaps I won't. I've never read Harry Potter, but my children love it. Aren't Dementors soul eaters or something? Those yes, I believe they scary. are or something like that. I don't yeah. know. I've never read it either. I've only seen some films. Paul, are you a Harry Potter I'm aficionado? Opt- I'm, I'm opting out of all of this. If you guys don't know it, I don't know. On. I would say... We can park it. I would say they absolutely are, but um, I'm not an expert in that. Okay. Uh, All right. right. So soul eater he is. So, yeah, so he's a soul eater, not a um, soul man. I was having exactly the same thought. He's just not a soul man. That's right. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's it. So Jeremy was a horrible influence on Jasmine's young and developing mind. At the time, still living in his mother's trailer, he would hang out with 11 and 12-year-old girls at the local mall. Who are these people letting their 11 and 12-year-old girls hang out at the local mall? Oh, lots of people because, you know, there's nothing else to do. But unsupervised, what year was this again? No, they're supervised by the soul leader. 
Yeah. Uh, 2005, roughly. Mm, it's not that long, not that long ago. No. No. I, I don't think it's okay, even in 2005. Mm, okay. All Cyclone right. bait, trailer park white trash. Oh, that's mm. a good one. Um, Stuart was just talking about, remember the um, scene from Hannibal, the follow-up to so the, pre the prequel to, to so um, so Silence of the Lambs, where he refers to them as uh, tornado bait white trailer park trash. Which, which I think is particularly uh, nasty. Well, I've never but, heard you know, that before. I haven't seen it. But what was yeah, the first bit? Tornado bait. That's, that's tornado what bait. Because I don't they're understand it. Oh, gosh. What does that mean? I do. You know how the oh, tornado baked. Yeah, 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 yeah. That part Sorry, of it. Sorry, I yeah. thought you said yeah. baked as in Not tornado duck. Yeah, exactly. I'm back on cooking. I thought you said baked, B-A-K-E-D. And I'm like, tornado baked? How does that work? Right, got it. Like, that's a big air fryer. Yeah, Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a human size tornado one. dehydrated, maybe, or <laughs> tornado soaked. I'm not really sure. But, I've got it. Baked, um, B A I. -T. Yeah, so anyway, no, got it. Yep. correct. Yes. Uh, so the teenage and preteen girls all looked up to him. I'm not sure if that's a reference to uh, physical height or <laughs> something. But... They probably did both. Admired him and looked up to him because um, of his height. Jasmine's parents were furious that the daughter was associating with someone so worthless as so Jeremy Steinke. Wow. Uh -huh. I didn't think they were yep. going to know. I um, thought they were going to be clandestine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but even if they knew, they the wouldn't two? have expected them to murder or her to murder them. Yeah, I'd love to. I can share a picture of them with you if you like. That's oh. her there. She's pretty. Yes, her cotton socks. With a yeah. gun in her hand, isn't she? Uh, and then yeah, that's him. Job. Oh. He is not pretty. Yeah. Correct. He looks like he's out of um, natural oh born killers. No, I'm thinking of that English band. Well, so does oh, she. Yeah, but oh, God, he died recently. Her. Who's the guy who died last year? He was absolutely lovely in real life, apparently, but he looked quite scary. Firestarter, who's that? Oh, uh, from the oh, Prodigy. Oh, from Prodigy. Prodigy. Yeah, he looks like him. Yeah, did he, he die? Did. He does yeah, he bit. did. Oh. He does. Oh, it looked to me, anyway. Yes. Yeah, he died last last year, I think it was. There is a little bit of Prodigy going on there, isn't there? Yes, they? maybe yeah. it's the look. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the, the way his hair or, his, or lack of hair. And actually, the Prodigy was pretty big in 2005, from memory. Yeah, you might be right, actually. Yeah. That was when we no, were, were, yeah. nice. when we were at they? music festivals. No. Yes, maybe you're right there, Schmitty. Let's have a look. Maybe Prodigy were, Prodigy were big in the nineties, I think. But yeah. even still, With, by then they um, were still brave and twisted fire starter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's is it. that smack my bitch up? Well? Remember that Vatican movie? Scene. <laughs> smack my bitch up. What's that song called? That uh, classic, no, classic. Goodness. Smack my bitch up. I'm sure is a song. Mm. It is. It's definitely a song. <laughs> yes. Smack my bitch. <laughs> 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 you almost made you almost made it sound operatic. Yeah, the the, the vibrato. That was from two thousand and nine. If I'm right, hey, on a third what single was? from the album, "Smack My Bitch Up" was also oh. successful. Oh no, 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 no! I think that's. I feel like had it been ten years later, it would have been very unsuccessful. Oh, I think you're right, Clarky. The Fat of the Land was a really famous album that came out in '97. So by the time I was into it, probably was about 2005. That feels about spot on <laughs> when it comes to me and music. Yes. <laughs> spot on. That's the standard delay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Spot on. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Sorry. So he's a looker. We've, we've no need to apologise. Yeah, yeah. So, Jeremy? So, yeah. So, Je yeah. so her Who parents are worried. Yes, yes. So I'll tell you a little bit about Steinke. So um, he would ultimately be the person whom Jasmine coaxed into helping her kill her mm. entire family. Mm. So remember we're talking about who Two was the mastermind figures. here. Yeah, yeah. So Jasmine's the mastermind, yeah, yeah. saying. But, yeah. She had an accomplice, uh, right. Yep. Yeah. So Jeremy and Jasmine started an intense romance, mostly mm. writing dark poetry, oh, which good. makes sense because she's into dark poetry, not dark poetry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Waddle. Waddle. Yeah, well Waddle. made. Waddle. <laughs> Waddle they think of next. <laughs> um, and talking on the phone, although sometimes JR would sneak out of her home and visit him at his mum's trailer. What's okay. his mum doing? 
Oh, passed like, out. There's an 11 year old crack, girl yeah, turned up, a 12 year old girl. Yeah. I think you're right. Unless you yeah. do a trailer park. <laughs> what else do you do in a trailer park? I know, sing Britney songs. <laughs> oh, why, Cliff? Uh, so... Mama needs some loving. <laughs> 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 So it was on one of these late night visits that Jeremy Steinke admitted to his true identity. Do you want to guess what his true identity is? The and, devil. And by true identity, I mean, I mean his fictional identity in his own head that he thinks is true that isn't really true. Okay. The devil. The devil. Bit too obvious, no, perhaps. Not the devil. Yeah. Not the oh, well, devil. Yeah, and you know, wasn't the lead singer of the Prodigy either. <laughs> 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 Is it I'll, I'll just tell you. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. He thought his true identity was a three hundred year old reincarnated werewolf. Oh yes, they wouldn't have got that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's no, a, unlikely. Yeah, yeah, it would have taken a while. Yeah. Even as you were saying that, I thought you were going to say a three hundred year old vampire. So I really wouldn't have got that. I was off. I was off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess again. No, guess again. Oh, uh... No, guess again. He <laughs> should. He, he sh- <laughs> Animal, vegetable, or mineral? Yeah, yes. Warm, warm. You, no, cold. Warmer, warmer. Is warmer. it a is it a book or a film? Yeah. How many words? Two words. Yeah. First two words. syllable. Yes, yes. Three hundred year old. Yeah, right. one or two Reincar- words. One word. One. <laughs> Reincarnated though, you forget as well. That would be hard oh, to gosh, act out. Oh gosh, that's a real in, mouthful. Again, would have been charades. very. Again, very particular to have. To guess that correctly. Mm. Uh, obviously, there was nothing good that could come of this scenario with a 23 year old jobless goth and an impressionable 12 year old hell bent on killing her parents and her little brother. Mm. Oh. Hell bent oh. is the right expression. Yes. Mm. Goodness. Okay. So, sorry, I just had another wine. Yeah. Uh, he wore a blood filled vial around his neck. He also oh. had an account on the website vampirefreaks.com and enjoyed the goth lifestyle. I feel like he should have been on reincarnatedwerewolf.com, not vampirefreaks.com. But, exactly. You know, that threw me. It's not my world. I don't know how it works. It's, it's not like trial by one Isn't that world, sort of like I a Billy Bob completely. Thornton and um, Angelina, Angelina Jolie? Jolie. They have, yeah, I had they the had same little, thought. Like, yes. Yes. Vile. Blood vials. But it was their oh, own yes. blood. Whose blood was he yeah. carrying around? It doesn't say. A it does duck. Say. Quack. <laughs> it could have been a duck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A, a duck poet. Duck blood. Yeah. <laughs> Reincarnated. A duck yeah. poet named Henry Lawson. <laughs> um, Someone so... mallard, surely. Yeah, surely mallard. I like that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, on the website, he listed his interests as scarification. Oh, like, yeah. That's a red flag right We've there. We've done that isn't before, it? yes. We've covered yep. that. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. That Pain, old chestnut. Kinky fetishes, blood, oh, yeah. and razor blades. <laughs> oh, my interests are razor that. blades. What? I don't think there's yeah, people yeah, understand like, what the word interest means. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I also like how, cutlery. And, how, exactly. You know, how interesting yeah, yeah. is it? Yeah. It's a razor blade. Cool. It's not yeah. very. But Gardening, yeah. bushwalking, yeah. razor, razor blades. blades. <laughs> Knitting, and, razor blades. And baking. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Travel. And Fabergé eggs. Working it. And, and working Fabergé out. eggs. Yeah, and Fabergé exactly. eggs. Particularly yeah. like cooking yes. Dover sole. Soul eater. One of these things is not, not like, like the, the other, other one. Ones. Not <laughs> like the other ones. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So Jeremy described himself as a gothic individual who believes in blood, destruction, guts, gore, and greed. Am I God's champion or Satan's angel? No, you're just a fuck. <laughs> I ad-libbed that bit. You're neither. Um, That's right. Yes. You're just a moron. Like, if, so talking about Carla, they don't understand interests. Yeah. A gothic individual who believes in, so I don't think they understand beliefs either, blood, <laughs> destruction, guts, gore, and Blood is not something you believe in. Yeah, they're not things you believe in. None of those such. are beliefs. Correct. I agree. Look, I, I might be pushing the boat out a bit here, but I'm not sure that Jeremy's level of education is going to set him up to um, be able to fill out these forms. 
as accurately as I'd like him to do it as I, I think that um Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's doing the best that he can, but he's just trying to be a little bit shocking, I think. Very shortly we'll explore his education. Oh, there you go. Going back to what we were saying, Paul, about it, them not being beliefs, there are people who don't believe that the COVID vaccine is actually a vaccine. So, you know, maybe it is a belief. If I don't, if I believe in blood. I believe it exists. I believe it's real. But that's a little bit of, um, no, but that's a little bit of disbelief rather than belief, right? Yeah, there, there is a COVID vaccine. I just choose not okay. to believe it. He actually works, believes yeah. in blood, which exists, destruction, <laughs> which exists, guts, which exists, gore, which exists, and greed, which exists. Like they're, yeah. they're not beliefs. I just don't know that he's competent no. and be able to and articulate what his interests are. Well, they're not faith. They're it's just not words faith. that I recognise. Yeah. <laughs> I, can pick the, I can pick these words out of a lineup. <laughs> yeah, but if he, if he was doing, if he, you know, he was interested in blood art, let's say, or cooking with blood, I don't know, maybe then he would yeah, have black blood pudding. in itself. Is mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He just feels like he needed to explore that a little bit further to help us with it. Maybe lives. Carla, to your point, there are um, boxes he checked rather than beliefs he has. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. again, whoever set that website up needs to rethink themselves. But yeah, yeah, nut punch. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely not punch. One of his personal blogs he posted, we must meet in the cemetery one hour before the full moon is at its fullest to speak of a tragedy within the coven. Those who have not overcome the mindless rage need not attend. Those who have not overcome the mindless rage. Overcome. What was that Thank show you. with Do the werewolves and the vampires? It was a trilogy. Twilight. Twilight. In London? Twilight. That's vampires. It. Vampires and werewolves don't have covens. Witches have covens. This guy is all over the shop. Yes. Oh, yes, but he's twenty-three. And he's head tornado head. bait trailer park. So you know, he's right. young. go easy. And his on audience him. is a twelve-year-old girl. <laughs> he's trying yeah. to use his words. Use yeah, your words, exactly. Jeremy. Use your words. What's the mindless rage that you've got to overcome? It's it's exactly game. what you're going through right now, Schmitty. <laughs> the this mindless carry character. on that sounds like you just don't believe what it is that he's talking about. I don't even understand what he's talking about in order to believe it. I don't think. I just think he's trying to use the word like to, to you know to. He knows what. Well, it that just knows, sounds he, good. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like little it's, girls. It's what's going to sound outrageous? Probably what Jr's and, parents were going yeah, through. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were going through the mindless rage. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, let's explore Jeremy a little bit. So um, growing up, Jeremy Steinke was both rogue heavily scholar. abused <laughs> and bullied. Rogue <laughs> scholar, yes. First rogue scholar to come from a trailer park. From Medicine Hat. Uh, I love that name, so, by the way, Medicine Hat. Oh, we didn't react to it, but I laughed at it. That's I laughed good, at it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, so Stinky became his nickname, Schmitty, you'll be pleased oh, to hear. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, and he was picked on mercilessly by his peers about his alcoholic mother and oh. his poor living situation. Right. Now we know what she was doing in that park then, don't we? Wasn't crack? Yeah, yeah Sorry, it wasn't crack. Right. Right. Well, it doesn't say it wasn't crack, but she would have oh, been okay. drinking at the same time, I think we can Beautiful. reasonably assume. Yeah. Most people right. get thirsty. There's nothing that excludes crack <laughs> in there. True, true. Yeah, um, there aren't many people who grow but, up. But so we're going to explore, because she didn't have a bad upbringing, right? He did, oh. so we'll explore that. Oh, yes, um, yeah. So Jeremy's father left him at two years old. I feel like he left his mum. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he just left him, him in the park. Just left him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And the mother quickly replaced yeah. him with many other abusive and drunk men. Yeah. From Jeremy's own words about his stepfather, he had a tendency to abuse me and my siblings, physical abuse and mental abuse. He'd tie us to chairs and make us watch the other children get abused as well. Well, he's an asshole. One former class, yeah, yeah. He needs a, yeah. a lot of nut punching. Yeah, I'm not going to abuse them in uh, isolation or privacy. I'm going to tie you to the chairs and you can all watch it happen. That That's is fucked up. up. It's all fucked up, yeah. Yeah. Still Not doesn't excuse. Do <sighs> Look, lay off. I couldn't let it go. Sorry, I just had to slip it in. Um, the only, <laughs> the only institution that has endemic 
abuse in it. One former classmate remembers Jeremy Steinke well. I remember being in grade five with him and he was always late for class. I remember the teacher finally fed up with him coming in late every morning, confronting him about it and telling him to set his alarm clock or get his mum to set it for him. That was all it took. And he snapped. I remember him screaming at the teacher in front of all of us about how he didn't have an alarm clock and how his mum wouldn't buy him one. I remember being scared. He was that angry. Oh, poor kid. I, I actually feel for him in that space. Yeah, yeah. I reckon, so do I. Yeah. You know, if you're poor getting kid. picked on and being told you need an alarm clock when your mum's alcoholic and can't get out of bed... Yeah. It probably has taken all his skills to get to school in the first place. Even Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, so Jeremy did not excel in his class and by 15 he was an alcoholic and yeah. a cutter. All right, yeah. You, you mean self-harmer? Well, I don't know. I guess that's what I mean. That's just what it says. Um, okay. I, I feel like that's a dangerous combination uh, because... As you drink, if you then get cut, you bleed, you bleed quite a lot. You're less yeah. likely to stop bleeding. It yeah. was in 2005, one year before the murder of Richardson's family, that Jeremy went goth. Younger girls adored him, partly because of his appearance. Guess why else? Because he looked like the guy Big from goth. The Prodigy. Well, <laughs> that, that's not what it says here, but um, clearly, yes, that's his appearance. Um Two things. He was charming. He was nah. good at cunnilingus. If you're eleven year old, you're eleven or twelve, why would you like an older man, older? Because he said he knew Justin Bieber or something. I don't know. It made you feel Cause special. Because his age allowed him to drive and to buy alcohol. Oh, uh, <laughs> right, of course. Right, right. <laughs> I just feel like he's the um, the ice cream van the man the driving kids, around yeah. the trailer park. Mr. Whippy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Whippy, but with a car and alcohol. But it's sad, you know. Twenty-three-year-old who has who has to get his validation from a bunch of prepubescent girls who are just using him up so he can drive him around and buy booze. I mean, the poor. Bastard. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. And it, no hope. Like, yeah. He can either stay at home with his alcoholic mum or no, get out. And... Yeah, he's terrible. And, they're the, and mm. you know, like he didn't get on with anyone at school. He's not doing well um, in any respect. His education's poor. Yeah, he's just a real sad case, really. A bit of a victim. Yeah, yeah. Yep. A psychiatrist surmised, surmised didn't diagnose, Steinke was mm. born with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder because of his immaturity yeah, and desire to please his peer group. So if he's immature and he desires to please 11 and 12 year old girls, he's clearly mm. not 23 mentally, I'm assuming. They are who he feels comfortable with intellectually. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear about uh, his state of mind or uh, what he did before Much. he went to the Richardson home? Okay. Because I'm a, I'm a bit of a fan of, a, you know, a big night out on the booze, as we all know. Mm -hmm. Shortly before driving mm -hmm. to murder the Richardson family, Jeremy consumed a case of beer, oh. several shots of vodka, several lines of cocaine, several oh, glasses set him of again. wine, and, oh. and at least one ecstasy pill. <laughs> I'll be fucked. I That's would like be dead night, if I it? did all of that. I wouldn't be driving a car to murder people. I'd be broke. And if, if I, I did, did they would. <laughs> yeah. Imagine getting yeah, my money. Exactly. That's right. That's not a cheap night out. <laughs> imagine ever, imagine ever bursting the through the door one. after all of that <laughs> to kill someone and you'd have no <laughs> dexterity. You'd just Woo! trip over the coffee table and pass out. Oh, God. I'm surprised no, you could you see could straight. All things in the vending machine at the caravan park. Do we know? Was that the order of things? Was that the order of what he consumed? No, or just a no, list that of was it. Just stuff he consumed. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't say over what time frame. I don't know a great deal about these things, but I have seen that film with Denzel Washington, who was a pretty much an alcoholic uh, pilot, 
and he the plane crashes but he saves everyone and then he's in trouble and he takes a lot of cocaine to straighten up so I, that's why I'm wondering about the order of things so he's drunk all this booze and he's had the ecstasy but if he had the coke at the end I don't really know much about cocaine but I believe that it, it can yeah. kind of give you the effect of straightening you out I don't, I don't know either. I don't even know if people who take cocaine would consume that much alcohol. I don't know. Because there's a so lot of mind I think altering they going do different on. Things. One's a depressant, isn't it? One's a what's the other thing called? Opposite I suppose depressant. it makes you euphoric. Uh-huh. Yeah, an upper. Uh, yeah. Yes, but there's a, a, a upper. You know, yeah. like a, what's the word I'm after? Uppers like and downers, word. is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to bug me. I don't know. Why I is it though? Is it that you're taking all the uppers and downers in the caravan park? From Billy Burger. <laughs> you've, you've bled the whole vending machine dry. <laughs> Stimulant. That's the oh, word. Ah, well done. done. There we go. So you say, uh, yeah, yes. one, is, one is like depressing you or, you know, bringing down your yeah. Relaxing. ability to be able to cope. And the other one is... Stimulating. Yeah. But uh, that's no, why I'm wondering know. whether or yeah. not one nullifies the other and that's why by the time he goes to kill people, he was a bit more straight. Look, if he'd been an alcoholic since he was 15, it's I think he's born. Fair to say he could probably operate. Yeah, he yeah. can operate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Some yeah. Level. I don't, my function. I did a pull of my own vomit. But, yeah, um, true, yeah, true, true, true. Each their Me own. too, yeah. I'd be looking for the nearest bathroom with tiles. Oh, so cool oh, in yeah, here. Yeah, it's so yeah. cool. I've got to lie. That's right. <laughs> get flat, get flat. Oh, I'm so hot. <laughs> oh, oh, God. oh, oh, Stuart. Don't mind Stuart, me. can you get me? Plate. Can you get me a wet towel, <laughs> Stuart? Can you get me some water? And oh, Stuart, as Stuart has experienced before. Stuart's anyway. always there. <laughs> there will be. There Sorry will be about no the curry plan. After you've had all of those things. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I meant frozen. I reckon, I reckon that. that when when Garada would even cut you off. From that. <laughs> <laughs> just goes to show how I don't think about, you know, hard hardcore drugs. I, I meant frozen water. Anyway, we digress. So it, it got very, very okay. wired up and then he went round and uh, yeah. did the dirty deed. Yeah. So uh, in his did own he words, it, he? he was off like a rocket <laughs> when he arrived at the Richardson home. Mm. Jesus. Wearing a black neoprene face mask. <laughs> A black, oh, this, it's going to get a little bit ugly here too again. So um, mm. just yep. brace yourselves or something. Uh, right. Wearing a black neoprene face mask, a black fishnet arm, sorry, black fishnet arm stockings, I'm going to put my a leather on. wristband, a neck bandana and eyeliner because <laughs> that's perfect murder wear, right? Hey, I'm just bracing. Jeremy I'm, snuck I'm just in the house. putting my seatbelt on. There you go. Right. I'm braced. Oh. Yep. Yes, oh. perfect. Well, well played. <laughs> Snuck in the house. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so do you want me to start that again? No, I no. I feel like I got distracted. Eyeliner. I don't know if you Eyeliner. did. Eyeliner. Snuck in the house. Yeah. What else was he wearing? Black neoprene mask. Fishnets Fish on his arms. Yep. stockings. <laughs> yes. Leather yes. cuffs, was it? Yes. Yeah. Um, leather wristband, yes. Leather wristbands. And it. And a neck bandana. You t- you nailed it. Well done. I was trying to come up with something funny. Like I was going to say that he had like a three-tiered skirt on. Or something. <laughs> a two-two. Actually, and a two-two. If uh, you put a three-tiered skirt on with that, it would make it very 80s. And it was kind of like, yeah. I don't know, make it a bit more valuable. Girl. I know yeah, exactly. you miss so me. I know exactly. you miss it, me. You know, some fishnet leather. Yeah, arms Madonna. Course, you know, did fishnet. he have um, yeah. fingerless yeah. gloves? Did he have a lace? Or lace gloves? Did he have a big bit of lace in his yeah. hair? Some lace in his hair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. That's the look he was going for. I don't know if he yes. thought he was going in a Goodness. fancy dress as a, you know, a pop star from the 80s, but that's what it sounds like to me. It does, yes. <laughs> His version uh, of goth is... Madonna's were white fish nets. Maybe that's how we got into ah, the house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Hello, it's, in, it's Cindy Lauper here. Cindy Lauper here. <laughs> although, she, although she doesn't have an English accent. more like Madonna. No. <laughs> yeah, she's American. Yeah. Hi, she's it's, Cindy La- it's Cindy Lauper. Let me... I can't do it. Anyway. It's Debbie Gibson. <laughs> Debbie Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, uh, Ima- Dal, I think Im- Debbie Gibson's at the door. I don't know what she wants. Imagine getting <laughs> she wants to see. <laughs> imagine getting murdered by Debbie Gibson. Debbie Gibson <laughs> singing I "Lost in Your Eyes." <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Goodness! I don't know much more to add to that. I don't know what to say about Debbie Gibson. She just no. seemed to be the sort of anti. 
character. Anyway, she came you were out saying, of nowhere. Sorry. Yes, yeah, she did. Sorry. I apologize, <laughs> yes. everybody. So he snuck into the house and was immediately confronted downstairs by Deborah and started stabbing. Ugh. Yeah, nice. Uh, so after that was all done, I'm not going to go into the details of that. Mark surprised Jeremy when he barreled down the stairs wielding a screwdriver. And according to his own words, as in Jeremy's own yeah. words, not Mark's, because Mark wasn't there to nice talk day. about it, yeah. just in case you got confused. Uh, he came at me real fast. I was scared shitless. I thought I was going down. Ooh. I went to back up and I tripped and fell and he jumped on me and attempted to stab me in the chest. He grabbed my face and shoved his thumbs in my eye. Oh. Now that bit reminds me of um, how the mountain killed the Prince of Dawn in Game of Thrones. Do you oh. remember that? Yeah. No. At what's his name's wedding? Yeah, I and do, just, and it's yeah, just sad that this guy that didn't squeeze a bit harder. Anyway. I uh, know. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, the last words Mark Richardson would ever hear before his death after asking why he was being stabbed was, it's what your daughter wanted. Oh, no. Oh. oh. Kick a man while he's oh, down. No, that is the worst. Oh. Yeah, and I don't know if that makes um, Jeremy worse or Jr. worse. Like I, I still feel even, like Jeremy would, was probably just a little bit silly and said that because it's true, but oh. certainly makes just, her Jr. culpable. I think it's fair to say that these pair do not bring out the best in each other. Mm, no, no, no Jerry Maguire no. moment here. So <laughs> the blade is. <laughs> You had me at hello. Yeah. You, you had, you had me, me at razor hello. blades. You had me at duck. You had me at duck poetry. Duck poetry. Yeah. <laughs> Quack. Oh, goodness. Quack. Waddle. Waddle. <laughs> All right. Let's just get through it. Come on. We can do it. Uh, <sighs> the blade used to kill Mark was bent at the tip, Ugh. showing that his killer hit his bones Bones, with yeah. the murder weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Now, seriously, this bit you need to brace yourself for because it's... Mm. Now that Jasmine's parents were dead, it was time to kill eight-year-old Jacob, who was upstairs cowering in his bed. Oh, poor baby. After a failed attempt to suffocate her little brother saying, shh, go to sleep. Jasmine took the bladed knife and stuck it deep through his neck. Oh, my God. 12-year-old killing her her eight-year-old brother. brother. Yeah. The the excess of blood led investigators to refer to the murder as a major bloodletting event. Jasmine would later claim that her little brother gargled as she pushed the oh. knife into his neck. Oh, he would. If, if she's, if, if she, oh. anyway, I won't talk about it. I yeah. might pass out. You need to be careful that I don't actually pass yeah, out. No, but... I, I tried to warn you. Have we got more wine? I want yeah. I want Is that <laughs> finished? No, are we? Oh, God. Oh, I can't. I, I can't go on without wine. Far out. Here we go. I think I need a sedative. Thanks, You're the best. I need a shiwi. Uh, well, um, is that alcohol or is that cocaine? <laughs> it's a mean. It's a means to go to the toilet while I'm stuck in this. Here's one of you use it UDL pairs. <laughs> no, I'll just hold on. It's all right. Oof. Right. <laughs> well, you broke the moment there, darling. Thank you with a bit of light relief. Rightio. So, can I just add it? So, he's downstairs doing the job on the parents, and she's upstairs doing the brother. Is no, that happening at the same time? With, oh, no, he's gone he's, upstairs. He's there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, he's tried to defend himself with his um, lightsaber. Yeah. No, I mean the. Um, no, the she boy. means Jeremy. Is Jeremy yeah, they're, downstairs? No, they're, they're both upstairs. So, so no, yeah. They are both no, so they've taken the parents out because she was downstairs as well. Oh, I but didn't realise that. So they were but oh, geez, yeah, yeah, no, so but she's really, I thought he may have just done around. that and then she's holding a brother up. Yeah, to no, his, you know, well, I'm assuming when they say he snuck in, I think she might have had something to do with the sneaking bit. 
with the front door key. Like letting him in. Was it day or night, do we know? You did say before, 1.34, but I didn't know if it was AM or PM. It's in the morning, I think. When the police uh, No, PM, because I remember the little boy uh, the little Oh, that would be the next day the... anyway, yeah. Yeah, that could have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Day later. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. So quite horrific. So I want to now take you on a little bit of a journey as to how the trials went. Lock them out and throw away the key. Because this bit, like that, the, that, that was all a bit of a lead up to how, how just how fascinating things get. And and as we talk through this, I want you to think about what the aim of our justice system is, because. You've got a 12-year-old girl who's basically masterminded. And this was in Canada, being, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Canada is notoriously yeah, soft yeah. too. Sorry, Canada, but, you know. If we, if we were to sit around and go, you know, what, what do we want to come out of this? Do we want punishment? Do we want rehabilitation? Do we want to stop anyone else from doing this? You know, what, what do we all want to see from this? Because I, I think that... As we explore this, it's hard to understand what the end game of justice is. Yeah. So anyway, I'll, I'll talk you through it and we can go from there. So Jasmine's trial started in June 2007. Uh, during her trial, she was known as JR because uh, the act uh, prevents her from being named because she's so young. So because she was under... Was she tried as 14, a child? I think. Was she tried as a child or an adult? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, Yes. Tried as a child. At her trial, she was asked why they murdered her family. She said she loved them so much and she thought it would bring them closer together. Says no one ever. Like, you know, let's go on a holiday. That might bring us closer together. Or let's all go out and have a nice It's a bit hard to be close with your family when they're dead and you're not. What the? It's just a bullshit thing to say. Yes, agreed. She told the court... She was in a zombie state while Jeremy killed her family and she could not stop him. I feel like her eight-year-old brother would dispute that. Mm. Yeah. Jasmine also said they did talk about killing her parents, but she meant it only as a joke. Oh. Hmm. Jasmine's going back on her position a little here. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she did draw, she draw a couple a pivot. of pictures. A pivot. <laughs> A backflip. That's what the um, media yes. use, likes to use when it comes to politics. Oh, they're backflipped. That's true. Yep. Uh, so Jasmine was found guilty on three counts of first degree murder. Good. On the 9th of July, 2007. Good. She's the youngest person ever convicted of murder in Canada. On the 8th of November, 2007, she was sentenced to the maximum of. Not much. Have a guess. Oh, something like 20 years. Well, I don't even think it'd be that much. She's a child. What can she be? I don't uh, know. The Canadian maximum for life is very, um, they don't, I don't think, they don't think they do have life. They have a very but, but, short maximum. Well, well comparative. Well, think about that one. If she's a child then. Well, 15, even less. 15 years. Yeah. No, I don't think that much. Yeah. I don't know. Until she's an adult. Yeah, still, still less. Uh, uh, hang on. Uh, warmer. Yes. <laughs> 10 it. years. Right. So she was... <laughs> Sentenced to them, she was sentenced to the maximum of ten years in prison. Yeah. She was fourteen years old at her sentencing. When you say in prison, however, yeah, of those, yeah. when you say in prison, was, yeah. is there yeah. further follow up where she goes into psychiatric care or anything like that? Oh no 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 no! Of those ten years, she would serve four years in a psychiatric hospital and four years under supervised probation. <gasps> Because where would they have kept her, to be honest, if she's that young? Were juvie, what do you call Psychiatric it? Psychiatric hospital and, uh, yeah, kindergarten, I don't know. In a child camp. <laughs> School, yeah. Holiday camp, yeah. Jesus. She's so young. So 10 years is the maximum. 10 years in prison is the maximum. For three. She for got four years. Yeah, that's just appalling. Three, yeah, yeah. And, and, <sighs> and look, even if he did the other two, the act of what she did to her little brother whilst he's trying to yeah, but there's still defend conspiracy to murder. Lightsaber. Even if you don't kill someone, you could, there's still conspiracy to murder. What, what, what I'm saying is if even if you took those off the table, she still hardly just that got act any, she of you know, got, the eight-year-old yeah. with his lightsaber there trying the to defend thing. himself against his own family. Like, horrendous. Yeah, yeah. So... <sighs> 
Uh, she'd be 23 years old when she completed her sentence. So she's 14 years at her sentencing. So I'm assuming she's spent a bit of time in custody whilst all of this has mm. played out. And then she's got four years in a psychiatric hospital and four years under supervised probation. Okay. What about him? Uh, Jeremy pleaded not guilty to the murders, although he did confess repeatedly. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. He's I so did it, bright. but I'm not guilty. Uh, what? Yes, he is bright. He's a genius. Uh, yeah. Jeremy's trial would have been in Medicine Hat, but his lawyer won the motion. Oh, here's your opportunity to um, joke about it again if you want to. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. Sorry, what you were saying, What you were saying his trial should have been in Medicine Hat. Did it end yes. up in like, but it's like Tricorn City or... I'm trying to, I'm, in, I'm working uh, on a hat joke. Ended up, uh, the capital ended capital, up on Judge Judy. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, Lauren, of course Lauren. it didn't end up on Judge <laughs> oh, Judy. Oh, God. You yeah. nearly had me. I'm like, what? That's American. Hook, line That's and sinker American. there. That's Canadians. No, yeah. I was down, I was thinking more like a top hat or a baseball cap. But but what even is medicine hat? I know. Like... What's a medicine hat? I don't know. It's what funny. about Milner City? <laughs> Milner okay, City, I'll go yes. With that one. All right. Okay, so where was it if it yeah. wasn't in medicine hat? So his lawyer won the motion the trial should be moved to Calgary. He argues that these citizens of medicine hat would sentence Jeremy as they knew too much of the case. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it was a bit prejudiced. Would have prejudiced the jury. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So his trial started on the 17th of November 2008, and the police testified that Jeremy tried to recruit some of his friends to help him with the murder, but they declined. And, and there was talk of uh, the other 11 Casey, and 12-year-old girls. friend of his, <laughs> mm. oh, no, thanks, Jeremy. being the one who may have driven. So re remember that he was... Uh, off like a rocket, yep. so possibly not uh, capable of driving. There was talk that Casey did the driving. Casey said that Jeremy uh, showed no remorse and she did not know about the murders until she heard the news on the television. Okay. However, and this is where I really start to get confused, she cleaned the blood from the truck and did not question the knives, baseball bat and garbage bags he had in the truck. Guilty. So she'd done oh, all the shit. cleaning of his car. Yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Jeremy's appearance in court was described as slumped, head down and staring at the mm. floor. According to sources, his appearance may seem that he tried to look remorseful. <laughs> okay. Or he just was. When he was... I have an yeah, 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 exactly right. Who knows? Uh, when he was asked why he murdered the Richardson family, he said, when you find your soulmate, you do anything for them. I did anything. So I, I feel mm. fairly comfortable at this point saying that she is the mastermind. Oh, 100%. Glad you agree. Carla, do you reckon? Are you on board? Well, I'd like to hear a little bit more. I mean, there's no doubt that she's, you know, been part of the architects of this. But I mean, he it was such a bad influence in the first place. I, I, I don't think that the pair could have worked without each other to a certain extent. They did sort of use one another in their sort of interests, shall we say, <laughs> blood. Um, I, I, I don't think he would have murdered her family. without her telling him. Yeah, to. yeah, I think you're probably right. There. Yeah, because there are plenty of people who are interested in vampires and werewolves and go on those websites and wear blood vials and all the rest of it that don't murder anyone. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right there. Yeah, fair enough. Billy Bob Thornton, he wears blood exactly. vials. And, I don't know. Oh, well, I'm going to say he's certainly he's not, not been, been charged or convicted of murder. That's right. So we're going to go with yeah. he hasn't done one that we're aware of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yeah enough evidence uh so he was sentenced on the 15th of december 2008 uh -huh. to three life sentences serving them concurrently That's interesting. right he was 25 when he was sentenced and would be eligible for parole in 25 years yeah, see there it is why there it is that's yeah. the canadian thing life isn't really life in canada 
I think 25 years is the maximum. Well, also so it's... you get all your crimes done in one time, so you just... But it's concurrent, yeah, that's the thing. too. Whereas if you'd gone out and killed another person later yeah, yeah. on, you'd get another 25 years. Yeah. You've got to do it all at one go. Yeah, the three yeah. of them are not consecutive. But you do them all at one once. One shot. Yeah, 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 that's right. Just It's all down to the time. That's the, the moral choice. of the story is kill everyone you hate at the same at time. Once. Yes. Don't, don't string, string it, out. it out in separate instances. I guess the yeah. only thing is that you, when you go up for is... parole, you may be declined. So, you know, you, you could keep being declined for parole until forever. For 50 years. Until you die in jail. Um, what, what gets me, though, what get, this is the bit that I constantly am challenged by, the whole notion of concurrent sentences. Like, it just it, to me, it's just nonsense. Anyway, moving right along. So his lawyers started appealing his sentencing. They claimed he was out of his mind and on drugs when he murdered Deborah, Mark and Jacob. I feel like we can all agree after that last description. Yeah, he was. Uh, that he was off his rocket, which I'm assuming is also equivalent to being out of his mind. Oh, yeah, drugs. no, he was. Yeah. Discuss? <laughs> oh, no, I, I think you're right. I think... Uh, he had a case of booze, which would have, as Carla and I said, put us in the toilet. Then he had wines, and then he had some vodkas, and then he had some ecstasy, and then he had some cocaine. And was there anything else thrown in? Had quite a cocktail there. I reckon that's about it. Your, your recall is excellent. Well done. Oh, I was thinking it sounds like a good Saturday night. Yeah. Um, but... As, but as Carla says... Sounds like what I do on a stakeout in Alexandra. <laughs> Hardly. But very expensive. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, like I can't imagine, how, as we said, how he could even function, let alone get there and kill two slash three people. So I agree that he was out of his mind. But he, the whole thing was so set up for him by her that, you know, I don't, I don't yeah. feel like... Yeah. I feel like he'd have his wits about him. Yeah, and I feel like that was set up for that wasn't on the night she said, "Oh, hey, by the way, could you pop around and kill my family?" You know, she'd been working on that for a long time. Thus, the I go back to when I when you showed the disturbing uh, cartoon that fell out of her locker. There were two Mm. stick figures killing her family. So you know, this girl had been working on this. With an, like this idea of two people mm. doing something of this accomplice for a year prior totally to it happening. Totally premeditated. Oh, yeah, well, she's totally premeditated, yeah. but she's obviously kept working on him. So her thing, oh, I just joked about it once, is total bullshit. Yes. She's probably been at him, and then for whatever reason on this occasion, he, he, he took all of that. I think he took all of that for the Dutch courage to go and do it. I'm not. Do you, I don't think I he don't, just. I don't think the mm. drugs gave him an impulse to murder. Is that what he's saying? Because I'm a bit confused. So yeah. is he saying after I, you know, consumed all of these drugs and all this alcohol, something snapped and I thought, oh, I'm going to go do that job that um, Jasmine's been talking about. Or had Just no, he, no, no. Or he and Jasmine had spoken about it that day. They knew it was going to happen that night. That's when I just, is there a, was, was there a time slot? Had they organised? Yeah, no, no. So, so there's, um, my understanding is definitely that premeditated yeah. aspect, right? So he'd done all yes. of that before he then went and yeah. did it. Not, I've done all of this and now I'm going to go and yeah. do it because she was part of it. So I reckon they've had, worked out a, a date. A I, would, I would think so. Yeah, someone to drive yeah. he's just gone. You know, well, yeah, allegedly. And for God's sake, it's not. That he just had a couple of. It, it wasn't. That, that, that's not something they would do every Saturday night, go and have no, all that yeah. alcohol and all those drugs. That's not true. All They're in a the trailer stuff. park and his mum's an alcoholic. Yeah, look, he might have, he, he, as Carla said, he may have functioned <laughs> at that level all the time, which then again <laughs> says would. if yeah. he functioned at that, le- at that level all the time it's and didn't groceries. kill people every other weekend, it no. wasn't the drugs and the alcohol that made him go murder them. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure correct. he'd be functioning. And he was an alcoholic from 15, remember, yeah. so. He um, would be functioning. You know, he's obviously had a few big benders in his time. And managed to avoid slaughtering a family. So, uh, yeah. yeah, correct. So, uh, despite the appeals, the Canadian justice system is firm about their decision and Jeremy will continue to serve his sentence. During his trial, his mother stood by his side and hoped that she would one day see her son outside of the prison walls. It would be unlikely, but like all mothers, she is staying positive. Okay. 
having been such a positive influence. What, Fair what enough. What a yes. lovely lady. Yeah, yeah now she's now supportive. Now she's, yeah. Good on her. Too little, too really. late to us. Um, yeah, yeah, correct. Like, <laughs> really. Uh, Jeremy and Jasmine still have contact with each other at this time and continued writing letters and confessing their love to each other. Jeez. None of them had shown any remorse or expressed any guilt over the murders. Oh, oh my God. So it didn't so like knock any sense into could... them and they went, that was just we went well, too a step far. too far. Mm. No, they're still. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. I think they're Romeo yeah, and Juliet. So, so these are two. Politics. Remember, yeah, remember, I, no, Bonnie and Clyde. Remember I told you that um, they, this is a mashup of two stories, right? So so one of them is a little bit earlier and it's saying that at the time of that they had expressed no remorse or, or mm. guilt. The other one is now talking about Jasmine's regret. So a few years into Jasmine's sentence, she started to regret her Jasmine's crime. Jasmine's regret, is that? Uh, the the subject or the title of a piece of dark poetry. I feel like it should be <laughs> Jasmine's regret. Duck poetry. <laughs> duck poetry. Carol, come on, come on. So three on. little ducks went yes. out one day. They were sorry. Over to medicine hat and far Sorry, away. sorry. Mother duck said quack 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 <laughs> quack, and no little ducks ever, ever came, came back. back. Came back. Sorry. <laughs> Or, Sorry. or is it the story of two Swedish ducks who went? Smack, one of them smack, married smack. someone in Ireland. The other one went to visit, and then they found themselves on a motorway one day. <laughs> and one of them said, "I'm going to run into this Follow truck." Me. Quack. <laughs> and the other one said, "Well, you should run into Polo. the uh, Volkswagen Polo. Volkswagen Polo." Bo- it was uh, Polo, Volkswagen Polo. Right. Polo. Yes. Quack. Smack. Uh, yes. All, also <laughs> regretful. Um, but at least at least at least that duck had a roof tile in its yeah. back. <laughs> MacGyver. Oh my god. What? What? Swedish MacGyver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how did we find these stories? Anyway, um so uh, a few years into her sentence she started to regret her crime and responded well to the rehabilitation. Oh. According to her psychi- psychiatric assessment, she was diagnosed with conduct disorder and defiant disorder. She's just a naughty little girl. Just note to self. I reckon. She's not the messiah. She's a very naughty girl. hundred <laughs> percent. Um, we'll explore that shortly. Uh, in September, 2011, Jasmine attends classes at Mount Royal University in Calgary, Alberta, during the last years of her sentence. In late 2011, she was released from the psychiatric hospital and in October 2012, sources said her rehabilitation is going well. Jasmine has attended court twice a year to provide updates on her progress and has received good reviews. It is said she is a poster child for rehabilitation. Her lawyer, Catherine Biak, said Jasmine is dedicated to getting better through the process. Crown prosecutor. Oh, sorry. Another fire alert. <laughs> Nothing to be worried about. Uh, country Victoria in <laughs> welcome summer. To the, welcome to Country right. Victoria. It's kind of in nice. In summer. <laughs> exactly. Uh, her lawyer, Catherine Biak, said Jasmine is dedicated to getting better through the process. Crown prosecutor, Ramona Robbins, said Jasmine has benefited from supporters and resources. I never I don't even know what that is. Just sounds like supporters some and resources. Yeah. Mm. We've all benefited from that at some time. Uh, so in 2012, Jasmine was 18 years old and is once again in the community yeah. because remember she's on uh, supervised yeah. probation yeah. now where she is serving her last years under supervision. In an interview with some of the residents, they said they feel scared and just want to forget the case. Some of the people that were on the jury feel that Jasmine wanted to take revenge on them and on their families. However, according to sources, I love the use of the word sources, after 10 years, it would be unlikely that she would take revenge. Excuse me. 
Okay. That's interesting that people are scared of her. At the yeah. age of... Mm. Yeah, well, she's a natural born mm. killer. <laughs> At the age of 23 in 2016, Jasmine received parole and was released. If she remains out of trouble, the murders would be expunged from her record in 2020. See, I don't agree with that. Expunged. I don't agree with having them expunged. So she, so, so she yeah, could yeah. go for a job. She, 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 could exactly, she could do whatever she likes. She could go overseas and no one would know about her criminal background. And it's not like petty yeah. theft. She murdered people. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but it's yeah. yeah so it Correct. is to your point earlier around what's the point of justice so given her age being so young um you know yes the justice system would seek rehabilitation for her to try and turn her into you know a, a useful member of society and that thus the um i, th I don't th i th don't think you pay for university in, in um canada anyway but you know, like the ensuring that she's uh, going through good education, etc. You know, she's she's not just stuck in a cell and left there to rot, because it is about rehabilitating them. But I'm interested to know what's happened to Jeremy and whether or not he's had a similar level of support, or is the and if not, is the difference just because of her age? Yeah, no, because he was older, so he didn't get any of that. Yeah. Um, so he would have been. Considered. So do you want to hear about how the community feels about yeah. her release? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So uh, Detective Brent uh, was one of the detectives on the case. Uh, when he was asked about how he feels about uh, her release, at one point I wanted her locked up forever. I don't think I'm there now. I hope she moves on and becomes a productive member of yeah. society. I don't think she's truly evil. I met some of those people that are bad to the bone and she's not one of them. Mm, she's just a very naughty girl. She got them fooled. I wonder what, set, what would set her apart. Yeah. What did she do that was not as bad as I know, people? right? So this is, this is where it messes me up because I think, are we trying to make the murderer a better person or are we punishing the murderer for Crime. the three murders including her eight-year-old brother who was defending himself with a lightsaber like i I'm, I'm super challenged by this because of course we want her to be better given that she's surviving but do i even want her in society i don't mm. i don't know i'm just sorry what are we investing in her Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm thinking. Can't that's a good idea. That's the, that's the, sorry. <laughs> it's the right response. It is, it is the right that's response. So true. It's a bit shy. Yeah, I it's mean, exhausting. it is it is a it is a you're conflicted because on one hand you think you're right, you know, someone who behaves in this way and and you know, spends a year. But then, you know, if you go back to your 12-year-old self when you don't have as much impulse control as when you're older you know you probably did think you didn't go around murdering people for sure but you probably had some you know impulses to do bad things so, so and in some cases you may have even done those so let's bad just hold things. off on this for does that mean that you don't grow out of that and, the, and can't be rehabilitated yeah no so, so do me a favor and just hold off on this for a little bit longer i'm going to tell you about more about how the community yeah, okay. feels and then a little bit about the um about what oppositional defiant yeah, disorder okay. is and then i think there's a really solid chat to be okay. had so um some of the, some of the other neighbors and friends of the family have expressed their disgust that jasmine is a free woman they say if you do the crime you should do the time and believe she should be in jail the rest of her life there were some residents that expressed empathy towards her they say she deserves a second chance and that hopefully she would be an improved citizen. Mayor Ted, this is this is a bit challenging for me, Mayor Ted Clugston <laughs> feels Jasmine deserves another chance as she was so young but does not believe she should return to the community. <laughs> you were going to say that. He said, as long as she goes he somewhere said else. the community is not the proper place. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. As long as she goes to trial by yeah, wine world, I'm fine. As long as fine. she's not in medicine hat, I've got no problem with uh, being released. Yep. He said, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He said the community is not the proper place for her. He went on to say it was a terrible place for her 
and she tarnished the community and hurt a lot of people. Jeremy, who is now known as Jackson May, Why? was asked to comment on how he <laughs> feels about Jasmine, who is released. Is Jackson May still he has in... He declined the request for an interview. Jail, yes. Jackson Sorry, May no. is in Medicine jail, man. yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yes, correct. Jackson may yeah. or may not so be an idiot. He's declined to But he was definitely a murderer. <laughs> but, but he may not want to, to have an interview through the Correctional Service of Canada. Yeah. It is important that the community trust her again and accept her as part of them. It will take time for wounds to heal, but if she shows them she is truly remorseful and wants to make the best of her life, they will warm up to her. Hold off on that and, and let's do this next little bit because I would like to come back to that paragraph. Uh, some of the residents of Medicine Hat blamed the gothic lifestyle for the murders. They say if Jasmine play, uh, stayed the sweet, outgoing person she was, she would never have killed her parents. Just because you decide to live a certain lifestyle does not give you the right to kill. And although it did change her personality, she was under the bad influence of a much older Jeremy. Hmm. I just think that's a lot of shit. That is. Yeah, I don't really think I buy that. I think it's the other way uh, around. <clears throat> Jeremy was under her influence. But also, there's no connection between a gothic no, lifestyle no, and murder. No, and your none, at all. none and, at all. And she didn't change from being sweet and outgoing when she became gothic. She changed when she murdered her fucking parents. Like, jeez. Yeah, or when she started to plan to, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, correct. Good but look at that. Um, so a criminal just... The, the drawings sorry, oh. are so childlike. I mean, it's like a storyboard with like little scenes. Kind of, I mean... It's a fantasy. Very, it's a fantasy. I know, and but, yeah. a little but, girl. Hmm. But as an, as an adult, if I was to draw pictures of that, I'd probably use stick figures too. I know yeah, to be fair, I would Laura. too. I'd probably use my words. I probably use describing <laughs> words and say this yes. is what I think I'm going to do. I don't think use I'd your words like a big boy. Clone. I don't think I'd illustrate the way I was going to um, murder my family yeah, with yeah. stick figures. I think I'd probably bother to write down what I planned to do. But anyway, each to their own. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, a criminal justice professor, Mark Totten, at Humber College in Toronto, and co-author of When Children Kill. Mm gave his professional opinion about Jasmine. He said, we've got a young woman here who at the age of 12 was diagnosed with oppositional defiance disorder and conduct disorder. These are two very serious disorders. Forward 10 years, is it possible to change? Absolutely. I just want to um, talk to you a little bit about Oppositional defiance disorder. Please do, because I've never heard. Can, of... can we? I've got to go to the toilet and so badly. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm literally going to piss myself. Yeah, go and do a <laughs> shee in the boot. I'm going to drive round to the toilet. <laughs> so I'm going to put my mic on quiet, and I'll drive okay. us round. All right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Go. We'll, we'll take. We'll yeah, take okay. a short break. No, no. I want to watch all this. <laughs> I want to watch you driving around. You can watch. You can watch. Take your laptop into the dunny. All right. We hope you're enjoying the show. We are a completely independent podcast and we want as many people to hear us as possible. We need your help. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on Facebook at Trial by Wine, where we share our updates, and contact us at trialbywine at gmail.com. We can't thank you enough for your support. Now, back to the show. All right, so um, would you like to know a little bit about uh, oppositional defiance disorder? Yeah, sure. Yes, I've never heard of it. Sounds like just being naughty. Me neither. Yeah, I think um, I was going to make a joke about my three children having it, but hopefully they don't. <laughs> They're going to take me out. Well, well, let's – so so hang on. If you've got three children, how many of them would you say before you know what it is have it? All three of them. Okay. Let, let's take a vote on that after we know what it is as well. Yeah. I, 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 look, I am hoping it's going to be more specific mind. than you're a naughty little girl because uh, otherwise that would be very Oh, I know. I'm just being silly. I know, Dolly, but I'm just saying. naughty little yeah, well. girls who don't murder their parents. Yeah. So let's see what it is. Yeah. So we're going to call it ODD. Uh, it's a childhood behavioural problem characterised by constant disobedience and hostility. Around 1 in 10 children under the age of 12 years are thought to have ODD, with boys outnumbering girls by 2 to 1. So I think, Carla, you're tracking quite well so I'm far. I'm still 3 for 3, yep. 
Yep, yep. <laughs> Nothing knocks any of those out. Yep. OGD is, is one of a group of behavioural disorders known collectively as disruptive behaviour disorders, which include conduct disorder, which she was also diagnosed with, uh, and ADD, uh, sorry, ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Early intervention and treatment is important since children with untreated ODD may continue to be difficult and antisocial into their adult years. This is can impact normal, on though? their relation. Is it normal, though? No. Yeah. Is, it though? is it though? Is it that you is work at though? Billy Burger? <laughs> is it what? Is it, is it normal? What's me what? For a child who displays none of these characteristics to suddenly develop them. Because that's what happened here, Glad isn't it? Glad you asked. Yeah, okay, good. Glad you asked. You're welcome. What, what I should say, and I probably should have prefaced this, is so we're talking about a case in Canada. And, and so this definition I'm giving you is from uh, betterhealth.vic.gov.au. So clearly Victorian in Australia, nothing to do with Canada. So there, there could be very different definitions across those two There shouldn't be, though. Should there? Agreed. But, yeah, I'm, but I, just, I, just wanna, I just want to make that uh, okay. call out right now. Is, is it the Canadian health ministry get in touch with us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, so early intervention and treatment is important since children with untreated ODD may continue to be difficult and antisocial into their adult years. She didn't make her adult years, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, this can impact on their relationships, career prospects and quality of life. Some children with ODD will develop the more serious conduct disorder, which is characterised by aggressive, law-breaking and violent behaviour. So the characteristics of ODD usually surface when a child is at primary school, but the disorder can be found in children as young as three years of age. Mm -hmm. A child with ODD may become easily angered, annoyed or irritated. Sounds like me. As I say, I think uh, I've got it. Have frequent temper tantrums. Yeah, yeah definitely every got it. day yeah. whilst I'm working. <laughs> I've got it. Uh, yeah. They, they could have frequent temper tantrums, argue frequently with adults, particularly the most familiar adults in their lives, Shit. such as parents. Husband. Refuse to obey rules. Carla, we're still three from three. I'm now, I'm now looking at myself a little bit more closely. I think I might have it. Um, no. Yeah, you'll be four from three. Four from three. <laughs> we've now got another one. Four from three. They may also seem to deliberately try to annoy or aggravate others. Oh, have low self-esteem, have a low frustration threshold, seek to blame others for any accidents or bad behaviour. This, oh, this is very generic. It's still very much like most kids, to be honest, at some point. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. thus far yeah. that you've said that I go, okay, that's the key. Like, What's the bit that unlocks this other yeah. part that is, you know, ch changes okay. from being so, a dickhead to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cold blood yeah, so... so yeah. So remember, early intervention and treatment is important. So I think probably all children go through this, but if you're parenting, you would manage that well yourself. If you're, you know, an alcoholic mother who, whose father, uh, whose husband walked out, and you've had several. That's not him. Since. That's her. Her parents were great. Remember. Her parents were fine. That none. She didn't display any yeah, no, of these no. characteristics. No, no. Until she. Yeah, no, and it's hundred percent agree. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is that if you if you're that parent and you don't then manage your children the way that perhaps Carla would, <laughs> then things go a little bit further. But 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 hold that thought right because I I am with you on that. So there is a link to conduct disorder, right? So you go from ODD to CD. So without okay. intervention and treatment. Some children with ODD progress to develop conduct disorder, CD, which is characterised by aggressive and delinquent behaviours, including lying, being sadistic or cruel to animals and people, physically or sexually abusing others. Here we are. Or breaking behaviours such as deliberately lighting fires, vandalism or stealing. So there's the two, right? So the first one is really very... Light on, let's be honest, it's given me nothing. Second one, Minor. got a bad yeah. name. The branding's dreadful. I would not call that conduct disorder. I mean, that's like where you go to a bit psycho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all in the names. Yes. Yeah. The, third, the, second is, one is where I, yes. the second one is where I think 
certainly most people would be aware if someone starts to to harm animals and you know starts to do things that you think oh god that's not great um i think socially that a lot of us are aware of those kind of things and we'd probably pick up some of those signs they're also front runners for psychopathic behavior correct that's what I'm saying. Correct. Can't we just call yeah. it psycho well, disorder? Oppositional <laughs> defiance <laughs> disorder say, sounds worse to me yeah. than conduct disorder. Like I feel like someone spilling a beer in a pub is guilty of conduct disorder. Oh no, purposely yeah, not. Right. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, spilling on the There's on nothing the defiant coaster. or no. oppositional about it. It's just, just don't fucking do it. So they're they're. There's the ODD transforms into CD sometimes, if not dealt with early. There's, there's a, also a, a link with family life and ODD. So the cause of disruptive behaviour disorders is unknown, uh, but the quality of the child's family life seemed to be an important factor in the development of ODD. Some studies have found that certain environmental factors in the family increase the risk of disruptive behaviour disorders. These include poor parenting skills such as inadequate supervision, yeah, harsh, or incons- drug use. Sorry, harsh or inconsistent discipline, rejection, marital conflict, domestic violence, physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, poverty, and substance misuse by parents or carers. To me, the important thing here is that they're all things that um, JR didn't have, but that That's Jeremy right. did have. Yeah. Yes. Also, the treatment of ODD, Carla, just in case you do have three from three or possibly four from three. (laughs) Do tell. Treatment options for ODD may include parental training to help the parents better manage the interaction. Oh, no, don't worry about that one. Sorry, better manage (laughs) and interact with the child. Yeah, can't be fucked interacting with children. Don't worry about that. Um, Next. um, What what else can you offer? What else can you suggest? (laughs) <laughs> is, is there a pill? Yeah, is there uh, just medication? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Something off the shelf, uh, including perhaps? behavioural techniques that re reinf- <laughs> that reinforce good behaviour and discourage bad behaviour. So remember to do that. Mm, okay. uh, this is the primary form of treatment and the most effective. Social support is increased if the parents are trained in groups with other parents who have children with ODD. Out of that parental training. To reinforce good behaviour, discourage bad behaviour. I reckon you've got that. I've heard you a couple of times when we've had little breaks in our podcast. I can't believe that someone gets to be this a doctor. This is just called parenting. I know. It's like, oh, this is bullshit. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, I know, I'm right? I know. bullshit on this Same whole here. thing. It's just like, oh, God. Can't work that out. Someone's like getting so a just, doctor just, over this. Just, oh, someone's naughty. Oh, Let's no. give it a disorder. Fucking hell. <laughs> No, no, but I, but I think there's normal behaviour and then it becomes a disorder, right, if it's not uh, not dealt with properly. So I think if you were to let it run rife, then it would become a disorder, but it's not, you know, okay. little kids push back all the time. It's called boundary testing. Correct, right? that's, yeah. That's what I call it anyway. I don't know what the, the real name is. <laughs> I think you'll find your boundary testing me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Could you please stop boundary, boundary testing me and eat your fucking dinner? Enough and boundary or testing. Or go to your room. <laughs> Before I start misusing substances. Yes, negotiation, <laughs> like nightclubs, are not things I enter into anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hell, you've been sitting on that gem, Schmitty. <laughs> yeah, that was well played. I like it. Uh, other other treatment options include functional family therapy, so to teach all family members to communicate and problem solve more effectively. Carla, note to self, could all go out and do this same therapy. <laughs> oh, God. Feel like it's you wouldn't like, benefit from it. I cannot honestly imagine any of the people in this situation. Certainly like that. Let's talk about Jeremy's mother. It's not like she's going to be in a position to go and put any of this into place. And that's the problem. Yeah. It's like... You've got a really shitty upbringing, and it's going to keep going. That's the reality of it. You can put a name on it, but yeah, you know, yeah. when your when your life is from the outset, you know, everything's so challenging. You've got no support, and you know, she wouldn't be capable of going and changing anything for him if that was the treatment. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of, it's very idealistic without really offering the person who is in the shitty situation, i.e., the kid, any real yeah, yeah, correct. Hope. 
So, so the other treatment option is consistency of care to all carers of the child, including parents, grandparents, teachers, childcare workers, and so on, need to be consistent in the way they behave towards and manage the child. So uh, this is, this is to me, this is really... Yes. This is just Caroline. parenting. Ah, parenting 101. This is no, just but, parenting. No, but, I mean, come on. It, it is. Uh, it is. But, but I think that Jeremy could have been diagnosed with this given his background. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, Jeremy's Jas- Jasmine, one hundred percent not. That's it. And 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 yet, old mate has said that <laughs> he thinks that she had that disorder. Both of those it's, disorders. Old and mate. yeah, as you said earlier, observed, didn't diagnose. You know, just said, "Oh, well, no, no, let this, me look this, up my book." Oh, naughty girl, she's this, got no, this. no. Oh, she did something. No, no, violent. we're at, she's a, got we're at a different person now. So, so this is Mark oh. Totten. Oh. who uh, is the author of When Children K- Kill, yeah. gave his professional opinion about Jasmine. He said, we've got a young woman here who at the age of 12 was diagnosed with oppositional defiance disorder and conduct disorder. So he's actually really? stating she sure. was diagnosed. But that was after she killed her parents, right? Nothing. There was yeah, nothing she wasn't point. diagnosed prior because there's no evidence no. that she had this. She had a year of bad behaviour. Yeah. She was pre-teen. What? Like, it's not yeah. unusual. It, you but, wouldn't, but what, you but wouldn't he, have said she's going to kill people. No. You his know? point was that she could, she could change in 10 years' time. So if she was going to go through this Canadian... Uh, just a system that says you've got 10 years. Yes, they need to. Could yeah, you she change? was an asshole for a while there. What, no doubt about it. My, my concern is that I don't think, based on the Victorian government's definition, I don't think she uh, has cause to be justified with that because I don't think she's had a bad family upbringing. I don't think I she don't has think... these disorders. I think she's misdiagnosed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, or maybe oh, wait, 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 no, because it's all expunged from her bloody uh, thing anyway. She's probably changed her name and she's out there planning a murder somewhere else. I don't really know that. For I know, that. right? Do you, want, but, do you want to know what her new name is? Oh, God. Let's I guess. would have thought you're not supposed and, to know it. Anyway. And, and do you want to know where she lives? Sure, why not? Not she's, medicine, yeah. though? She's currently living in a secret location under a new identity. There you go. See? Changed her name, moved nah, out of town. You, you were right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so according to some sources, Jasmine was the instigator of the murders and had the most influence on Jeremy. Jeremy was seen as the weaker person in the relationship because of his abusive childhood and enjoyed all the love and attention Jasmine gave him. Oh. Um, I just want to come back to, and, and this is going to be horribly wrong, but I still need to say it, because we've spoken a lot about magic pussy and... <laughs> I just, I just hope that applies to uh, women who are over the age of eighteen. I don't, I don't want genetic mutations that lead to, you know, prepubescent children having magic pussy. I just think that's wrong. So like, can we, can we all agree that she didn't have? She magic had pussy, Wiccan there... pussy. No, she had Wiccan pussy. <laughs> oh no, my no, Lord. the whole point is, I don't care about the description. Leave her pussy out of it. But don't use that as a defence. I, I would have left her pussy out of it. You started it. But secondly, she started it <laughs> by putting her pussy out there in the first place. But, again, what's the statute? <laughs> um, oh, it's totally illegal. You, pedophilia. You know, yeah, yeah, well, yes, yes, it's, it's certainly illegal. It's, it's um, He's well, 23. She's Canada. It's statutory rape. Statutory rape in America, I'm not sure about Canada. Anyway, it was bad yeah. news anyway. bears. I get that, yeah. <laughs> it, it was yes, that's that's exactly what it was. You they went on the teddy bears picnic and the bad news <laughs> bad bears, news bears showed up. up. That's right. And shit happened. Yeah. Oh, um, shit got really the last up. bit I'm gonna tell you about before we really discuss is uh, uh what is parasite and how it relates to this case. So um mm. parasite, a term which uh, is the murder of a parent or parents uh, is usually carried out by men. Teenage girls are driven by their boyfriends and forbidden love. They build up anger and resentment against their loving parents, which results in murder. Jasmine's case had more press attention and public interest than all the parasite cases recorded. In a study in 2010, they raised the issue of brain development. 
Compared to adult brains, the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed, meaning their inhibition, emotional self-control, and risk-taking are affected. As for Jasmine, she felt a range of emotions, love, trust, jealousy, satisfaction, and fear. With all these emotions and hormonal changes that could have played uh, ooh, part in how she behaved, this may explain why Jasmine killed her family. In Jasmine's case, she did not have an abusive childhood. She only protected what was important to her and when threatened murder was her only option in her mind. Also, and this is, a, this is an important one, when Jeremy carried out the plan and murder, she had confirmation that she did the right thing and there were justifiable reasons for doing it. So the fact that he murdered them justifies her desire to murder them. That's, it's because uh, he was prepared up. to do it, it validated that she said it should be done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, correct. So she, yeah. as a oh. as an underdeveloped brain, goes, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I have okay. an idea to kill someone. An adult has said, yeah, that's fine, I'll do it. So it must be okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that oh. Jasmine fully understands the actions she took, she has to live with it for the rest of her life. The murder against her family cannot be explained away or be reversed. Hmm. So, a couple of things. To me, this is an incredible story of someone who is too young to have committed the crimes that they have committed. And then given all of that, how do you, uh, how do you, like, what, what's a good outcome for this? Because I just feel like it's, it's a really, really tough one. But coming back to what um, Mayor Ted Clugston, it is, it is important the community trust her again and accept her as part of them. It will take time for wounds to no. heal, but if she shows up, shows them she is remorseful and wants to make the best life, they will warm up to her. No. No. I think she should go somewhere else. No, I don't think that's again. a thing. Sorry, that wasn't what Mayor Ted Clugston said. That was what the author said, but yes. Um, yeah, no, no. So... Talk to me. What do you think? Jesus no, I don't Christ. think she needs to go back to where she was from. No, go away. Yeah, go somewhere else. You, change your name like, like she's done. Yeah, that's right. I think that's better. It's the only way involved. for her to be able to function appropriately yeah. and not have it hanging over her head and also to let other people get on with their lives. Agreed. I what, what's, what's the right balance between the mum, the dad... And the little eight-year-old boy with the lightsaber who never got to progress their lives any further and making Jasmine, a rehabilitating Jasmine so she becomes a valuable member of society again. Look, it all comes down to your position on whether you believe in rehabilitation or you think that the justice system should be about punishment. And I know that when we do our trial by one, you know, as Car Carla put it, comedic sentencing, um, you know, we tend to go punishment. We're, we're, yeah. we're talking, we're, we're looking to punish people because our justice systems don't. Our ju well, they do. It's not pleasant being in jail. Um, and I'm sure four years in a psychiatric uh, hospital wasn't pleasant for her. But the ultimate goal is to rehabil rehabilitate people into society and if not, keep them out of the public so they're no longer a harm to people. So, you know, they, they, it's not... It's not chain gang. It's not. It's not. You know, hard labour. It's. It, that's not what it's about these days. So, it all. It's all about how you feel, though, because because we fictionalise our own, you know, justice system. Um, it's all about whether or not you want to go down rehabilitation or you want to punish. And it is. It's Isn't tricky because of our age. Here's the question for you: What what, what conversation will we be having if this is a 28 year old woman? who elicited her 45-year-old boyfriend to murder her parents and brother. We wouldn't even be having this, would we? We'd be like, aren't they terrible monsters? Yeah. It's all about yeah. the fact that Locked she was 12. Forever. Yeah. It's about the fact that she was a child and therefore how also, responsible do you hold her for her actions as a child? But also she murdered her 8-year-old brother. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I, I just think no. and, and I, I, I feel like given what's happened, if she becomes a contributing member to society, that's a win given what's happened. Yet, do I actually want to forgive her that? And do I actually want her to be a contributing member of society? Like, 
I, I feel like there's a whole lot of, you know what, I, I just don't care. And I want a message to be sent to everybody else that if you do this, we don't want to rehabilitate you. We don't want you becoming a valuable member of society. I don't know. I, I find it, I'm, I'm really torn by it because once it's done, of course, the best outcome is that she then becomes rehabilitated. But I don't know. What, what, about, the, what about the justice for the mum and the dad and the poor little boy it's 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 justice versus rehabilitation and i can't i I can't i can't get my head around this it's it's that Mm. difficult i'm left wanting for you know for i don't even feel like the the diagnosis or was for what she why she did it doesn't seem to add up to me i just still feel like we've, we've covered other stories where people have you know done less or done the same and you know there's a there's a clear you know, um, well, I don't know, maybe I'm just not co- convinced that, that the way she's been diagnosed is sufficient. I think, you know, to go and kill somebody and to kill your little brother and murder them that way, it's so horrendous. And, you know, having children of my own, my kids would know <laughs> what's right and wrong. And then, you know, she wasn't she wasn't the one who was affected by substances or whatever else. She was just, I don't know, maniacal. I just, I, I can't, I don't know how to deal with it, to be honest. I really don't. And I, I, I keep thinking, you know, she was uh, obviously well feel. beyond her age in terms of what she was doing. So just trying to park him for and, a moment and, and deal with her, that I, I find it very challenging. I don't, I'm not because, satisfied. Because they could have killed the parents and not the brother, right? They, yeah. They could have, if, if the if the issue was that the parents were saying no to the boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did the little boy have to be? doing any of that, you know. So yeah. I, I, I think I agree with you and I also think, the diagnosis to me, when I compare the Canadian diagnosis to the Victorian definition, yeah, doesn't make sense. Yeah, I won't have it. I'm just going to pause it for a sec, just so that Schmitty, um, is she? What's she doing? Is she back at the house? Boat? She's got to close off at this point. All I can see is some caftan moving around. <laughs> it's some tits and ass. She's copping a squat. <laughs> I think she's pleasuring herself in the car. <laughs> 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 yes, that makes sense. You're terrible, oh, Muriel. Oh, what is she doing? She's setting up somewhere. Where is she? She's in a hotel. <laughs> Someone said to her that they can use her power, I think. No, surely not. Yes, you can You can run a power cord into my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, what is going on? Sure, ma'am. There's Look, she's got shit hanging up everywhere. She's in the public dummy. <laughs> Is she in a public toilet? She might She's be. found a PowerPoint. <laughs> I am indeed in a public toilet. She's in a public toilet with a PowerPoint. Well done. <laughs> I found a PowerPoint, yes. Just a bit. I've got a bit of an echo, though. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's the block, though. Be proud of my ingenuity. Oh, my God. Is that podcast on tour? Oh my god! I cannot believe that Schmidt is her. going to be broadcasting from a public toilet with a PowerPoint. <laughs> with a massive That's echo. commitment. But now she's got no signal. She that, needs to put up one of those umbrella. What do you call them? Umbrella. Right. Um, signal satellite, getter. No. Satellite. Dish. Satellite. satellite dish, yes. Umbrella thinking. signal yeah. giver. Also known yeah. as <laughs> <laughs> signal getter. Signal getter. Very technical, aren't I? Is it is signal getter related to David Getter? David Getter. Possibly. I'm feeling very frazzled and I don't know what I'm going to do for this sentence. It's freaked me out totally by this child murderess. Uh, I, I reckon I just go it, harsh. I found it really challenging. It like is. It's, I don't even know what to say because I'm not happy know. with anything that's been presented. They feel like they've gone, oh, light, light. You know, she's she's got, what's it, the silly, the, the CD, what's it stand for again? Convergent behaviour, was it? Con- conduct disorder. Oh, conduct disorder. I mean, that just sounds so piss like, weak to me. It's cross. like trying to wear thongs into a club, you know. Yeah, the, so, well, don't the do correct that, conduct in this situation is not to wear thongs. See, that that like, sort of stuff's really bugging me. It's like, that doesn't feel... I think she's been misdiagnosed. That's not severe so, enough. So just for our listeners, um, I just want to reconfirm that Schmidt is actually broadcasting from a public toilet that does I'm have here. A... <laughs> I'm in a toilet. I found a, I With... found a PowerPoint. Of course, you never know the battery. sound effect. You've done a very convincing job. You sound like God. Toilet. This is perfect. <laughs> you can deal out God's retribution <laughs> with the right sound effects. 
Oh, someone called Lynn has just sent me a message saying, Caroline, do you still need help? No, no, oh, no Lynn, toilet, I've Lynn. solved it for myself. No, thanks, I'm Lynn. I'm broadcasting from a public station. toilet with a... <laughs> Lynn, I'm in a public toilet. But I've got to I say, Lynn, if you ever listen to, to our podcast, I appreciate thanks, you Dad. trying to help me. I just picked your message nice. up too late. Thank you. You should... Um, can you please send her a link to our podcast just so she knows Somebody what she could get that woman a drink. To. And by woman, I mean you, Schmitty. Have you a drink, darling? Can you have a little... Oh, don't. <laughs> oh, keep away from the toilet bowl. <laughs> I just sent her a photo. I just sent her a photo of the laptop sitting on top of the hand dryer in the toilets. <sighs> <laughs> All good, Lynn. All good. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Lynn. You, Love uh, your work. You've messaged me post-crime, not pre-crime. Because <laughs> <gasps> that'd be... Um, minority report. Minority report. Pre-crime. Exactly. Um, all right, I'm so... Saying, have found uh, emergency power in toilet. Okay, because I'm very echoey and sound like God, I will tell you what I was going to uh, sentence these people to. I'm just moving the mic back because... No, well, well, so, Shmini, can you give us God's view on whether the justice system should actually be seeking justice for the death of the mum and dad and the boy or whether they should be trying to rehabilitate Jasmine because I feel like we've been lost in this a little bit. What, what would God say in this instance? Well, on his throne. Obviously I'm Or on her <laughs> throne I'm not as I should representative. say. Not representative. Or he, she, them, whatever. I'm not representative of God but uh, a Christian view would be that forgiveness is the most important thing so we should be forgiving of Jasmine. Yeah. JR and yep, um, JR and um, Jeremy, we should turn the other cheek and get out your other lightsaber because that's the Christian way to do it is to not judge and the lightsaber of forgive. healing it's as very, opposed to the lightsaber see, of cauterizing. This is this is the reason this is the reason that it's difficult to live by those values sometimes though because it's very hard to um, forgive someone who's done something so yeah. heinous and that's what heinous. makes being did, 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 did. a true yeah. Christian yeah. being a true Christian actually very difficult in our world and uh, that is a challenge for Christians and you know I'm not um, I'm not actually a big God botherer but uh, Clarkie likes to set me up like I am but no, you just bite every time I do that, <laughs> Well, that's because you insult my faith, and so I sometimes you I are, have to. You, you know, are like the god of trial by wine, so I feel like you should just speak confidently and from the heart. Yeah, but it's not like I go around making uh, comments that would affect would offend you on things that are important. One hundred percent, never do. Anyway. I must, I must make that very clear. But we never ever have religious discussions <laughs> other than on trial by wine, just just because I think it's. Funny. I don't know if that's true, but anyway, anyway, um, You're so. Right. I'm going to go back to, not, not God's view, this is Schmidt's view, I'm going to go back to the things that were really important to both of them and they're really interested in, like razor blades and wicker and blood and gore and pain. And duck poetry. Um, and duck poetry. <laughs> and I think I'm going to let them revel in those things um, by using razor blades and creating blood and gore. Um, so I'm down the punishment line. I find it really hard, like you do, to say a person, even though I understand it's a developing brain, can grow out of or move away from whatever it was, that impu the impulse that drove her to influence this guy. For It wasn't a five-minute thing. It was for a year, you know. So I think this, and I know she's had a lot of treatment, et cetera, but in my fictitious world, I'm building a big wicker man and I'm putting them both in it, and I'm just lighting her up. All right. right. So you're going uh, justice as opposed to rehabilitation? Yeah. Oh, I'm going, I'm going justice because I think one of the things that we do on this is about the justice element because we often feel a bit ripped off by the real, the real justice system, which is probably highly appropriate because of all the ethical things that we talk about and that's why we are not actually <laughs> in any form. And, and by the way, if we ever get called to jury duty, we're definitely not going to get selected. Um, not if anyone listens to any of this. <laughs> not, so, not unless got... they serve wine at, to the jury, in which case. <laughs> I think we've oh, totally got ourselves well. off the hook. 
Mm. But um, yeah, so so therefore that's probably why I do lean towards more um, punishment than uh, as, a, as a means of justice than just saying put them in jail because put them in jail seems very ordinary and banal and where we are already. But anyway, yeah. over to you two. Mm. I find this really oh. hard. You know I say that all the time. I know I find it really difficult all the time, but having heard your... what we love about you, though, that you really struggle with your um, Punish role me. as... As drawer. Uh, yeah. Um, as sentencer. Yes, I can be a bit of a light touch, it's fair to say. Um, Schmidt, you... No, no, you're something... just an emotional hmm. being. I, what I really struggle with is trying to work out <laughs> if a child that I knew, say one of my own, let's say... Um, knowing their ages and what this girl has done at that age and how how aware of themselves my kids already are and what's right and what's wrong and what's really wrong and what's really just outrageously horrendous, heinous. Um, I, I don't think that the girl's been, I don't think she was diagnosed correctly. I just don't think that that's what someone who was struggling with being a young person and, you know, coming to grips with, you know, who they were would do. I just don't, I just don't think that, that's what's right. I think she probably has something quite more severe in terms of a diagnosis, but that doesn't really help us in terms of a trial. But Schmidt was saying that, you know, do we focus on rehabilitation? And I, I would have to say that I wasn't thinking that, but maybe I need to do that because otherwise I just can't deal with it anyway. So from my own point of view, maybe I do need to be a bit more forgiving in the sense that, you know, go down a rehabilitation route for Jasmine because otherwise, you know, no one's going to win. She just gonna rot in jail, and where's the upside of that for anybody? I feel crap even saying it. So there you go. What would um what would rehab rehabilitation look like for you? Similar to the you know the four years in the psychiatric and then the four years of supervised. Maybe a little bit um, more severe. Maybe a little bit more like really ongoing, where she would be with you know she would she would live within a, a situation, a community of people who could keep her safe, keep her be rehabilitated but without going into like the wider community I just I don't know that I'd want to back out there I don't know I just it's so hard to think of a 12 year old versus a 22 year old in you know in normal development terms let alone with this sort of overlaid so I appreciate I'm not making a great deal of sense because I just don't think I know how to sentence it to be perfectly honest I find it really challenging yeah no it, it's conflicting it is, right it's, it's horrible hard. yeah what about you Clark? I mean, are you still with us with us on your uh, Alexandra throne Sorry. on the god line I'm here I'm here I'm standing outside the toilets I'm not actually well I'm in I'm not in a cubicle put it that way anyway well it um, looks like it looks like I think you it, are a little bit so th- I'm near the basin where you wash your hands. Um, it, it is trial I, by one. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to go with that. <laughs> it is a really hard one. And in a real life scenario, I think most people would opt for rehabilitation. The trick is at what point do you consider releasing someone into community or back into the public and is the public safe from that person? And that would only ever bear out through, um, you know, uh, being monitored and treated and assessed. And so... Basically, the way they've dealt with her, I think, is wholly appropriate, um, to be honest. And I get where you're coming from, Clarkie, that you don't feel that there's a, a justice for the family. But they're her family, too. She's got to live with the fact that she killed her own family. I know her, bro- I know her brain is underdeveloped because she's 11 or 12. Um, I, and I, I struggle to work out whether I should take that into account or not because of the damage she did um and you know is is the world better because we rehabilitate her or is the world better because we just don't tolerate her and i i don't i don't have that answer i, I just don't what what i will say to you if, if we're going to come to to my punishment I, i'm going to tell you about old mate mayor ted bugston again because he feels that jasmine deserves i feel like he nailed it right he really did Jasmine deserves another chance as she was so young, but does not believe she should return to the community. He said the community is not the proper place for her. He went on to say it was a terrible place for her and she tarnished the community and hurt a lot of people. That says to me, we need to get in touch with Elon Musk, get him to set up a um, rehabilitation clinic on Mars and, and bring back that age-old punishment of banishment. Like, I think 
I, I want you to do well. I want you to succeed. I want you to understand that what you've done is wrong and hopefully learn from that. But please, just not amongst us because we kind of all want to kill you a lot and, and we don't want to be confronted by that day by day. So we, we don't have banishment as a punishment in our society anymore because we're like a global village. But I could see why banishment would work back in the day because you've got a chance and, and go and make the most of your life and, and we wish you well just don't come back here yeah you said that well you're right you did yeah oh, i was going to go harsh i'm sure there's a pocket of trial by wine world where we can banish people to to never be seen yeah, the behind the toilets yeah. can it be can we build one can it be interplanetary though i don't want it to be um Remember, Why not? remember we said completely made up. <laughs> it's whatever you want it to said, be. <laughs> we said what's her name to, the, to live with Theon Greyjoy in Westeros, but I just feel like I want her. Yeah. I Have you know, been I, to I, I Epcot? Just, what is it? Epcot? Epcot was like um, Walt Disney's vision of the future. So in Florida, there's like you know Disney World and um, Animal Kingdom, and then there's one called Epcot. You will have seen it. It's like it was probably made in the sixties, and it had like this big globe and it's like all these little worlds with like futuristic trains and that running through it uh, maybe at the back of trial by wine world we can dedicate a space to like tomorrow land or something where it's like banishment land um, oh fuck off land good. <laughs> good riddance yeah, You're good on your yes own. i think so yeah i think you have to go through some kind of wasteland first yeah, before you get oh, to yeah, yeah. The, the fields that you're allowed to actually rehabilitate yourself in so that yeah, you don't yeah. ever want to come back either. So that's your barrier. Yeah. Okay. You have to arrive right. blistered and sunburnt and I think that maybe even <laughs> have to go through um, Thunderdome <gasps> where two men enter, one man leave. <laughs> maybe that would work too. Maybe, maybe we put them in a wicker man but we don't actually fully burn them so that's where they get the blistering. Then they go through the banishment and then they go yes. through Beyond Thunderdome and then they can go and work it out themselves. And, and if they're still around, good luck to them. I hope you have a long and uh, fruitful life. Fruitful life. Oh, jinx. Barley's. Jinx. <laughs> Barley's. <laughs> Get off the ground. Caroline's around. <laughs> All right. Well, apart from some technical issues, uh, Clarky, you've done it again. Well done. Absolute Smashed porker it. of a story. So... This is God, I'm just kidding for anyone who that offends, signing off from the toilets of Alexandra. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. It was a Miss mobile. You all ready. A mobile trial getting, by one. Are you getting the echo in here too? Miss you all Oh my God, we are. Thing. You're nailing it. <laughs> You the one say. thing that this episode missed was somebody using that public toilet. That would have been oh, really yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Someone coming in to do a quick whiz. It's like, oh, excuse me. Schmitty, it, Schmitty this, um, <laughs> this is your one opportunity to say, children of Earth, this is God. <laughs> Don't be an ass. Children of Earth, <laughs> this is God. Don't be an asshole. <laughs> Yes. Well done. Nailed it. <laughs> right. Thanks, God. You've note. reaffirmed you've reaffirmed my belief in you, <laughs> unlike uh, my belief in blood and guts and shit. And razor blades and duck poetry. Yes. <laughs> duck. All right. <gasps> Just before we go, can I share one one thing with you? Yes. Please. Uh, let's end on this. Yes. It's called The Human Duck by Lenore Hetrick. <laughs> Okay. Guess I must be partly duck, for I love rainy weather. I'm happy as a lark when I and a rainstorm get together. Boots, a raincoat, umbrella. Then let the rain come down. With my dog beside me, off I go, splashing through the town. Maybe I'm not only partly duck, maybe I'm half a goose. Folks seem to think so when I pass, quietly, plainly on the loose. Yes, I like rainy weather a lot. And I beg the old weatherman to send a good heavy splashing shower every time he can. Quack. Oh. Quack. And that, my friends, is duck poetry. <laughs> Quack. <laughs> Excellent. At its best. Very fine example of All duck right. poetry. Excellent. Thank you, Clarky. See you later. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.
Michelle. Michelle ready, Schmidty. <laughs> Bye, Swanee, oh. darling. Bye. Thanks for listening to Trial by Wine. You can contact us at trialbywine at gmail.com. Please rate, review and subscribe to Trial by Wine on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to support us, you can become a patron at www.patreon.com, Trial by Wine. Or visit our website, www.trialbywine.com, to donate to us. Your support will help us cover many more cases and apply wacky sentences. We really appreciate you listening and hope you tell everyone about us. Our cover art is by John Christo and music is by Beauchamp from pixabay.com. Mm-hmm.